welcome back to Adobe Live here on Behance. How's it going? Welcome, welcome to our illustration week. I'm here with the talented Kirk Wallace. Welcome, Hi. Kirk. Hello. Chat, say hello to our new friend, Kirk. <laughs> Be kind to him. This is his first time live streaming here with us at Adobe. We are live Tuesday through Thursday, 9 to 5 p.m. Pacific time. And like I said, we're focusing on illustration this week, which is my personal favorite. <laughs> you could probably guess that since my name is Kathleen Illustrated, most places. Uh, Kirk, maybe you can introduce yourself quickly before we kind of introduce the stream and sure. I'll show your portfolio on my screen. Cool. Um, so my name is Kirk Wallace. I'm an illustrator, uh, freelance for the last two years or so. I've been mm -hmm. illustrating for um, a, a while, I guess, maybe five or six, not that long in the grand scheme of things, maybe. Not your whole life. No, four or five years. Yeah. Um, and I work just outside of Boston, up in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. in the United States. And um, yeah, I work a lot with like, uh, I work in animation a good amount, though I don't do much animation. I work for animation often. Um, yeah, I work, making like assets? Yeah, a lot of assets for mm -hmm. animation. Um, I do a lot of uh, commercial work. I work with a lot of brands, tech brands. Nice. Types of things. Cool. Maybe Lots we of can character based stuff. Maybe we can hop over to my screen and we yeah. can show and not just tell. So I cool. see a lot of animation. Yep. The character design. A lot of animation from Latham Arnett is the animator that oh, I work nice. with most often. Yeah. Gotcha. So you kind of create the assets like you said and yep. then And then he... he does his magic. Yes. Yeah. His literal magic. Yes. Nice. Everyone is saying hello, hello. Oh, wow. so Leo many... says more Bostonians. <laughs> Right on. Mitch says, your style is so awesome, Kirk. Wow, that's so nice. Thanks, I agree. Everyone. Great textures. <laughs> and chat, since Kirk shared where he was from, we're streaming here from San Francisco, and we want to know where you are watching from. I know there's people all over the world. Hmm. Let us know. Most office says hello from Egypt. Oh, that's Wow. Cool. It must Super be cool. late. Yeah, yeah, early or something. Adam Danielson says, best illustrator in the world. <laughs> wow. Adam is kind. <laughs> Christine says, Christina says, nice characters. Got Virginia, Chicago, India. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, see, I and told hello. you they were nice. Oh, they were so nice. Nice people. And everywhere. Right, they wow, come from cool. everywhere. And I so know. Awesome. So, chat, you've so seen cool. Kirk's awesome work. Uh, we are going to challenge you to also create alongside Kirk and the rest of the guests this week. Today's challenge is to create a superhero. So if you want to go to be.net slash live, that is where you should be watching because that's where you can chat with us and check out each other's portfolios. You can also learn about the challenge. So just go to be.net slash live, click on the challenge tab, <laughs> and all of the information is there. You have about an hour and a half to get those submissions in, and we actually have submissions already to look at. So in a couple minutes, maybe we'll pop those open. But first, we'll let Kirk kind of take it away and tell us what you're going to be working on today. Cool. Um, yeah. So maybe one or two of you in the chat are familiar with, and hopefully by the end of this, everyone will be familiar with um, my little character named Skullboy. Skull. Or Scully. I was going to say, he has a formal name. <laughs> <laughs> Scully, I think, is where we're settling mm -hmm. so that we're more, uh, we're less gender. There you go. Mm -hmm. So Scully is uh, sort of my Mickey Mouse, I suppose. And he, so I'm working on a master's thesis, which is a short film. And for that, I want to make some posters mm -hmm. for the short. So today I'm going to work on a poster that I have the sketch of. And then I think we'll do some like vectoring uh, in Illustrator, right. and eventually, maybe tomorrow or the next day, we'll get into some color and some texture stuff and using a little bit of Photoshop. But today, I kind of was hoping to go over some sketches, talk about composition, talk about concept, talk about that battle that mm -hmm. was like a many day battle of figuring out like what the perfect amount of too much was and not yeah. enough and figuring, you know, that being too simple. Right. And uh, we can look at the sketches and then start vectoring some stuff and do the pen tools, some shapes and Pathfinder, all that type of stuff. Awesome. I'm really excited to see how you work because, correct me if I'm wrong, but you come from kind of a computer science background. Yeah. And you kind of inject that yeah. taste into how you build your illustrations. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I have a computer science degree for undergrad and a master's in illustration uh, coming up in the summer. I'll be finished with that. So, yeah, so mm -hmm. I make sure that I use the tools uh, as tools and make sure the computer never gets in the way. Yeah. And it should work for you. And mm -hmm. using, so I think maybe I use things a little differently sometimes and organize things, but try to make it weird. And yeah, maybe there'll be some cool 
tips or yeah. if anyone has any questions about anything, mm -hmm. I'm happy to drop everything and do that. Right, chat, that is the beautiful thing about these Adobe Live uh, shows is we have a guest here, captive audience, and he has to answer your questions. It's part <laughs> of the contract. <laughs> I see people are already asking questions, but also the beautiful thing about the chat is they answer questions for each other. Cool, yeah. So you make yeah, everyone jobs follow a lot each other and be friends and mm -hmm. be kind. And yeah. yeah. There's and and let me know when I'm doing something wrong or maybe a cooler way to do it or a different way or anything like that. I need to learn as well. So. Hey, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. We've already gotten a lot of questions about your glove. People are like, is that for his rap persona? Does it help <laughs> him in some way? Superpower? Oh uh, yeah. So the glove is um just like so that I'm gonna be drawing on the Wacom tablet. So I uh, my hand might get a little sweaty or hot or whatever, and like my skin would like skip across the glass. Mm -hmm. So this just kind of helps me like be able to glide on the glass a little bit better. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! People are excited about the pen tool. Seriously, ask questions if you see things that you have questions about. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Illustrator can be scary, I think, to people, yeah. especially artists who might be more used to like drawing, maybe in Photoshop mm -hmm. or on paper. Um, but it's really not scary once you become friends no, with it. No, it takes some time. And I think one thing about it is like you have to learn a lot of tools that you wouldn't think are going to be used for what you want to do. Yeah. Um, but then you find a way to apply that to mm -hmm. what you're doing. So it's a matter of just like bashing through tutorials, even if they seem silly or True. not useful, mm -hmm. you'll find a way to apply it back to your thing. And yeah. It is like, it's not only for logos and like simple things, it can be like very illustrative and oh, textured yeah. and Definitely. all sorts of colorful stuff. Cool, so let's see what you're gonna be working on. Okay, cool. So I've got some sketches. I'll show the final sketch first of the poster. All right. So, the story of the short film, quickly, is that Scully gets stuck in these sort of magical temple rooms, um, and it's inspired a little bit by the game Portal, or oh, the cool. movie Cube, mm -hmm. or like even like Indiana Jones types yeah. of like traps and stuff like that. So he gets stuck in these rooms, and he keeps going through them really quickly, thinking that as an adventurer, he can just get through whatever. Mm -hmm. And he ends up getting stuck. And once he gets through the third room, he comes back to the first room, and he thinks, like, what the heck? Yeah. And then goes through it again, and he's using all of his tools in his backpack and not really thinking about how to solve these puzzles, but just, like, brute forcing through them yeah. with a hammer. Right. And he finds out later that if he flips his head upside down because he's a skeleton, he can actually see from a different perspective mm -hmm. and kind of take that step back and think like, okay, let's see how I can actually fix this and figure this out. Mm -hmm. And that's when he sort of takes that moment of zen or meditation and then solves it. So I wanted to draw the poster with like, usually most theatrical posters have like an evil villain mm -hmm. and a hero and some sort of conflict. But with this story, there was no villain necessarily other than maybe Scully himself mm -hmm. and I thought well okay how does he how do I still have conflict I don't want it to be all happiness because a poster should show story I want to yeah. show how it's going to develop so I thought okay how can I do that with only one character and I thought well he's getting in his own way right. for the most part he's made out of bones and those bones actually end up being the thing that saves him because he's got his That's head true. flipped. So yeah. maybe he's in a cage, maybe he's stuck, maybe mm -hmm. something like that. And I was like, well, what if he's stuck in a cage of bones? And I was like, oh, like a rib cage. Yeah. And I was thinking, okay, maybe I could draw a rib cage, something like that. So I got a little more abstract, but basically, you know, he's created his own trap around him. Mm -hmm. And he's also simultaneously broken it once he kind of gets into that. And I don't have his head flipped here just because I thought it was too many levels of like, right. You're like extra what? things, extra Why? things, extra things. So yeah. he's sort of got this meditative state. Um, he's missing an arm through his travels mm -hmm. and he's kind of like breaking one of the bones. So it's just showing just the beginning of maybe how he gets out. Mm -hmm. And again, it's much more metaphorical. Like this cage and stuff won't be in the short at all, mm -hmm. but it's kind of a cool way just to show that metaphor yeah. of trapping your own self and right. getting out and, and stuff like that. And it's a quick read. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, this is conflict, he's stuck. But also I like that you didn't flip his head because that's kind of like the key at the end where you're yeah. like, oh, but you don't know that unless you watch it. Yes. So that's good. Yeah, so that short, um, I'm hoping to have finished, or at least a trailer of it in like the next couple months. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know when I'll finish it, but it's like a three, five, six minute little short <laughs> three, five, episode. Ten, <laughs> yeah, who knows how long. <laughs> it was like so hard not to make it like an hour long because it's, it's we've, that was the first time I've really written a script and yeah. a storyboard and mm -hmm. we're working and we were writing and rewriting and I had some friends that helped me and it was so much fun. It was, I felt like I was like, like, 
an episode of like South Park or something, like, <laughs> write, you know, writing yeah. and rewriting, and we would do all this stuff. So, um, yeah, we it's and these are going to be hung up. I'm going to do three of these for different episodes, and mm-hmm. we'll hang them up like during the gallery show for the thesis and stuff like that. So. Cool. Yeah, it'd be fun. So I wanted to keep it simple. Um, it's black and white now and stuff. It's, you know, it reads kind of, it's it's just a sketch. So what we're going to do, we'll do color. We'll do a lot of fun stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And um, it's still going to be kind of simple in general, but we'll do lots of cool little shadows mm-hmm. and textures and details yeah. and lighting. That'll be probably pretty fun. So I was hoping we'll start with the pen tool and start tracing this soon. Sweet. Cool. Start? Yeah, it sounds good. I like, cool. first of all, that yeah. you did it white on black. Did you build it that way or did you just invert no, it? No, I inverted it. So, yeah, I was. So, let me go through like these horrible, like it started. Horrible. <laughs> um, so, it started with just like really junky sketch. And um, if people can see my mouse as well, mm-hmm. I was kind of trying to like get this idea of. I was a little bit inspired by um, Tweety Bird. And, oh, yeah. Uh, it's, I don't, is Tweety Bird a guy or a girl? I don't know if What's there's it, ever... It, yeah, maybe it doesn't matter. Them? Maybe it's just a bird. Yeah. <laughs> so little <laughs> Tweety Bird, uh, was that that cool cage, and it's like very iconic with like uh, Sylvester the mm-hmm. cat, I think is the name. Yeah, he's always um, trying to get in that I was cage. Trying to, yeah. So, you know, I kind of was inspired by that first, and I started blowing it out a little bit more and like kind of a more interesting shape, and just really, really rough, like nothing good, but just ideas. Mm. And before this, it was just a bunch of writing. I was just writing ideas and right. things like that. Right. Um, and that evolved a little bit to um, a little bit, you know, more uh, in line with things, right. writing notes to myself. I like that. Um, yeah, it's really just like for me trying to think of how I want to do things. Do I want things larger? You know, with this, it was a lot of everything's kind of the same size here. It's right. one, two, three. Everything's kind of boring. There's right. no hierarchy. Mm-hmm. You don't really know where to look first. So I'm playing with a border a little bit, thinking about where the icon, you know, what icons I could do. There's these three medallions that are in the cage. Gotcha. Those are like iconic representations of the three rooms that he gets stuck in. Oh, sweet. So it's sort of like those are the catalyst or the bones, I guess, are the catalyst of the rooms and sort of Mm -hmm. their togetherness. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, so I've got all these different ideas. The pose is, you know, rough. I've got his head flipped here upside Mm -hmm. down. I ended up deciding, let me flip it back over. Bones for the cage. Um, And then moving down and forward, we've got three. Things are getting a little bit more. So I'm drawing, yeah, I'm drawing this black on white and then mm-hmm. I flip it later just because I knew I wanted it to be, a, but I wasn't sure at first if I wanted it to be a dark piece or a light oh, okay. piece. Gotcha. Um, and black ended up working out the best, especially because a lot of the, maybe I'll share some of that after, but the stills from the actual short Ooh, film. Ooh, yeah. Because a lot of that's more light and colorful and bright. Okay. So I wanted this to be sort of the opposite, just mm-hmm. so it would contrast on the wall in the thesis show and stuff mm-hmm. like that because I didn't want to do more of the same. Gotcha. The lettering here is it's starting to get a little more exploratory. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. So this top lettering, is um, a sort of brand assets that a friend of mine, a really good graphic designer and, and ID maker, uh, Richie Stewart, and he worked on this. And like, if you look at my site, like any type stuff mm-hmm. or lettering stuff, that's usually all done by him. Oh, and gotcha! He I really like that. Yeah, it's incredible. Mm-hmm. And he was able to like really pluck like everything that. Actually, he and I are kind of even who came up with Skullboy. Oh. He made like this logo mark version of the pin that I showed you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He came up with that. With me, we kind of brainstormed together and he like plucked out everything that was me yeah. as a designer, as a human, as everything and made it into this simple mark. Mm-hmm. Like, wow, the cool little skeleton, but it's not too like Harley Davidson cool. No, yeah. like, it's a cute Mickey Mouse mm-hmm. sort of skeleton. It's got Disney in there. There's yeah. He's got the flipped hat. It's kind of a nod to punk music right. and skateboarding and it's he's got attitude. everything. So it's really fun. So yeah, so this type up top is Richie, and then all this type below, or all this lettering below, is uh, me, which is much more amateur hour. But yeah, so I start <laughs> exploring. I was exploring some, you know, different rib. I mean, different cage styles, whether it be more traditional. I didn't want it to be too much like a bird cage toward the end, though. Yeah. So then we go into four, cleaned up a little bit, mm-hmm. still proportions a little bit. Mm, I don't know, I'm yeah. tightening up the type a little bit and stuff like that. Did you do this in Photoshop? This is, I was using uh, Ske- uh, Adobe Sketch, is that oh, what it's called? Yeah, on the iPad. My favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was fun. This, like, really toothy pencil that I was using mm-hmm. was, it just, like, it drew me in and I was able to kind of, I don't normally sketch on the iPad too much, mm-hmm. but I decided to do it for this. And, uh, yeah, so all this is all done on there. Hey, that's great to know. People were wondering, like, is this Photoshop paper? Yeah, yeah, this is Adobe Sketch. Mm-hmm. Um, 
using probably one of Kyle Webster's brushes. Yes. Probably, I think, like an animator pencil or okay. something like that. It may even be a stock. Uh, there is a graphite know. pencil. That's pretty nice. That's just an Adobe one. I just love how sharp and toothy it mm -hmm. can get. And I think it, it may have been a default one even, but it just had a really nice tooth to it. So I was kind of hooked on drawing with it. Yeah. So that's where that all yeah. came from. Chat, if you have never used Photoshop Sketch before, it's a free mobile app that if you have a Creative Cloud subscription, you can super easily send your assets from your iPad or your phone straight into Photoshop on your desktop. Uh, you can send things as PSDs, all kinds of things. Also, speaking of Kyle Webster, he will be here next week. Oh, cool. Yeah, we'll be doing a mobile illustration week. So we've got Mark Crilly, Kyle, we've got Rocky Rourke, Robzilla will be here, oh, nice. uh, Jax will be here. So it's going to be an awesome week. Make sure you stick around next week, but also enjoy this <laughs> week because this is where it all started, right on the desktop. <laughs> Um, I think someone asked, yeah, how do we invert in Adobe Sketch? I don't know. Um, I exported it as a PSD mm -hmm. to Illustrator and inverted from there with Command-I. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if there's an easy way to do it in Sketch, but there's it, you can export it straight to Photoshop mm -hmm. and just do it from there. So that's where I did it. Right. Um, yeah, and then so that's where we ended up on number five. And so, yeah, type's a little more clean. It has more room to breathe. We went with the Scully type instead of, or the lettering, rather mm -hmm. than the Skull Boy. Uh, felt a little better and yeah, things like that. I agree. So I'm going to bring it into Illustrator and see what we can do. Sweet. Right. Good time to start. I'm yeah. Up. And while you're opening that up, Chad, I'll remind you if you are just tuning in, we do have a challenge. The challenge today is superhero. We want you to use either Photoshop or Illustrator to create a superhero. So we have a template for you. Go ahead and check out the challenge tab at be.net slash live. You have about an hour and 15 minutes to get those in. Uh, and then you can publish it online when you are done, either using CC Libraries or Dropbox or even uh, Behance. Share the URL. All these uh, pieces of information are in the Challenge tab. And make sure you're watching on Behance, because that's where you can chat, you can log in, you can enter the giveaway when it happens in about 45 minutes. And you can follow each other, click on each other's icons, and appreciate each other's work. Yeah, check everyone's work out. Mm -hmm. Uh, steep plugins. <laughs> yeah, so um, probably a lot of people may be seeing, yeah, <laughs> someone's already asking Robert uh, about these two plugins, or yeah. not asking, but uh, noticing them. Yeah, so pretty much all these like different colored things, um, I've got a few of them installed on this machine, um, and there's more to do, but mm -hmm. they're basically plugins for Illustrator that help you do, th they're just an extra layer of easiness. Yeah. They help make certain things that are a little bit more tricky yeah. easier. Mm -hmm. And um, Maybe you can give an example. Yeah, I'm trying to think like the one that I like a lot is like, I don't know, if I had like three points and I wanted a circle inside of them, mm -hmm. normally with the circle tool it's kind of tricky, but with this you can do like a three point circle. And then Whoa. go like that, and then that way they're locked like right into there. Mm -hmm. um, I use that pretty often. Wow. Um, Can you do that again yeah. for the folks at home? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's cool because um, you can, I mean, you can just make a two point like that, or okay. if you wanted to connect it to a third, you can make it like that. Whoa. Yeah, it's fun. It makes it like way easier. Mm -hmm. And it's good for just like arcs too, because even if I had like two points that I wanted to make like a reasonably nice arc mm -hmm. on, I could bring it down here and have a smooth right. arc and then maybe cut that here right. and there. And then I've got a decent arc or whatever like that. Wow. Um, so that's like one of the many. Um, they have trials. They're like way worth it. They are, they take a lot of time to get used to. Right. They're Another sort tool. of, yeah, it's, it's tough because like you get them and you're like, I don't know. I mean, I can just do it the way that I do it normally mm -hmm. and it's just as easy. But if you kind of force yourself into using them for all the features they're worth, it's way good. They have tons of videos and stuff. It's cool. It's worth oh. checking out. It seems kind of fluid, like intuitive. Like this is how I, my brain wants to do this thing. Yeah, it helps. It's it basically easier. all the frustrations that yeah. Adobe hasn't gotten around to yet, like mm -hmm. fixing, and then sort of gives you like shortcuts and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Same thing with like I don't know if this is. I know the pen tool's gotten a lot better in Illustrator recently, right. and I kind of want to revisit it. But this is like their pen tool. But there's these ghost handles. I don't know if that's a thing in. But you can pull straight out Ooh. from there, and you can also like highlight two mm -hmm. uh, handles at the same time, and they go together. Interesting. And you can like lock them together yeah. and stuff like that. So, it's it's weird because it's hard to show like a handy 
you'll see me doing it probably when I'm doing it and you're yeah. like, oh, that makes sense. But it's hard to yeah. just like come up with an example of when it's useful. Mm -hmm. But there's so many times when you're like trying to like adjust, like if you're making a circle and there's, you want to make like both of these things. How do I do it? Here, here. And like pull both of these down together maybe mm -hmm. at the same rate. Yeah. You can do that together. Just a different way to build yeah. shapes. Yeah, it's all about shapes and line really. Mm -hmm. anyway. Um, so there might be, but everything that you can do with the plugins, you can do with Illustrator anyway. Yes, so that's important. So if it starts getting confusing or anything, anybody wants to like bother me in chat or poke at me and say like that didn't make sense or how to do it or what did you do, I can go over it and, and we can always do it with the real pen tools. Yes, like right. So not doing anything that's impossible no, in not at all. native Illustrator. No, just and shortcuts. Yeah, Joanna, you don't have to use the template. It's only if you are interested in getting a little help building your super hero. Uh, but it would be awesome if you did. <laughs> uh, Ryan says Astute has a big sale right now, so that's great. Yeah, yeah, it's like 50% off. I think yesterday it was 70% off, but Whoa, Astute, like, you're throwing yeah, it away. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, they're throwing it all away. <laughs> yeah, they're worth checking out. And free trials. Free trials are always worth trying. I think mm -hmm. it's like a week or two. Yeah, why not? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, if you've never tried the Adobe CC free trials, you can download uh, Illustrator or any of the other apps for a free uh, trial. There is instructions on how to do that in the challenge tab, I believe. Yeah, anyone that's not sure about if they can draw digitally, maybe they doodle at home or whatever, mm -hmm. you totally can. It's like, it's such a game changer. Like Illustrator, I can't even draw that well, mm -hmm. but like Illustrator lets you draw well. Yeah. It's so great. You can build well. Yeah, yeah, you're, it's all about building too. Mm -hmm. You're just doing little pieces and building up on top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm actually gonna open up this black background thing in Photoshop and uninvert it, divert it, just <laughs> so I can see it a little bit better when I'm tracing. Gotcha. So I just command I and copy the whole thing and I'm gonna paste it in. And I'm gonna use that instead of this black one, I think. Um, just for tracing purposes, because again, everything's gonna change as I start building, like over time. This is just to get basic shapes going. Gotcha. Chad, I'd love to know if you have ever tried Illustrator before, or if you are a little hesitant in your drawing skills. Maybe you could try Illustrator as a different way of drawing. It is, like we said, much more like building or collaging, putting totally. things on top of each other. Yeah, yeah. there's not a whole lot of, it's weird that I, or I think maybe it's weird that I use like a Wacom tablet in Illustrator. Right, a lot of people just click. Photoshop, but yeah, you can mm -hmm. totally do it with a mouse or even just like a keyboard or mm -hmm. whatever. But I, I do like, I do a little bit of drawing in it for like certain like wavy lines mm -hmm. or whatever, but for the most part, it's building. We're just building shapes yeah. on top of themselves and arranging. Right. Uh, Mitch says he uses Illustrator every day. Yes. The Began Zoo says he lo loves Illustrator. <laughs> Who else? Who else? I'm sure a lot of you do. And like when I was designing graphic t-shirts, we did a lot of actual drawing in Illustrator, which was weird for me because mm. I'm a Photoshop person. But it's like, oh, you can do this in Illustrator too, just in a different way. Gabrielle uses Illustrator. Christine's been using it for 21 years. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Uh, Safira, when I guess. it was just Illustrator. Yeah, right? That's cool. <laughs> Safira is excited for illustration as the topic. She is a beginner illustrator. Awesome, Safira. Thanks for being here. So I think I'm just going to, uh, to get the jitters out, mm -hmm. work on this little in first. Okay. Because it's easy. It's a bunch of squares. And yeah. we'll chase those. Perfect. Um, Francisco says the pen tool frightens me. So oh, this will be good to get yeah. his jitters out too. Totally. Good. <laughs> yeah, let me know if there's any questions. Yeah. Um, so again, like I'm starting everything. It's just... It's the nice thing about Illustrator is everything can change like all the time. Mm -hmm. it's super non destructive. So I'm basically just gonna like, I'm just using this sharp red just so I can see it on top of the black. Mm -hmm. And uh, none of this is like final until I say, so you say so. Yeah, until, until you I print so. it. Yeah. And then maybe not even. No, even then, no. Yeah. I think the non destructive nature of Illustrator is what I miss when I go back into Photoshop. Yeah. I know a lot of, it seems like a lot of illustrators that I'm familiar with or friends with have moved to like a very gouache, flat illustration style in Photoshop only, mm -hmm. especially because of Kyle Webster's brushes. And I'm always a little nerve. I'm like, I, should I be doing Photoshop only? But Illustrator allows for such a good like mistake leverage. Mm -hmm. like you, you get that wiggle room with yeah. the mistakes and then you can always bring it into Photoshop later right. and then brush it up and mm -hmm. texture it and play with it and stuff like that or even redraw it tracing. There's sometimes where I'll just finish an illustration in Illustrator, bring it into Photoshop and just almost like trace it again right. with brushes and stuff. But yeah. Illustrator is so great for certain things. Whatever makes sense for you. Yes. Uh, Edna says, I like this. There's always something new to learn on Illustrator. <laughs> 
I think I'm gonna learn a lot just by sitting here, soaking it in through osmosis. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I also am always like trying to keep as very few points as oh, possible. Oh, that's a great point. And I always <laughs> try to keep them uh, like on tangents. Um, so whether it be like horizontal tangent or so like when I say tangent, I might be using it wrong, but I do have like a math. <laughs> like so in the mathematical know, but, yeah, yeah. terms of tangent. <laughs> um, basically, yeah. Like, I mean, these are all tangential lines. Um, where they're all either like completely horizontal or completely vertical. Mm -hmm. And the less there are, um, the easier it is to manipulate. Like if there were a bunch, I'm adding points at this point. Mm -hmm. But if I, or if there were a bunch and I wanted to like move this circle, I'd have to like select every move single one. Them all. But if there's just one, it's a lot easier to mm -hmm. move the whole thing. So yes. I'm trying to keep as few points as possible and trying to keep them in like order. That is a really great point. I, when I was learning how to use Illustrator, my professor was like, use as little points as you can, but never really explained why to do that. So I think that's a great, great explanation. Michael Shea's in the house. <laughs> hey. What's up, Mark Ireland? He says, hi, a bit late. You're never too late. If we're live, you're not too late. <laughs> Yeah, you're only late if you miss it, but then even then it's still on demand, right? Yes, chat, if you want to rewatch all of these uh, sessions, you can go to the Creative Cloud channel on YouTube, and as soon as we're done here, it'll be uploaded. So it's pretty much literally on demand. Uh, Gabrielle wants to know, do you ever use Live Trace or Live Paint for more detailed sketches? Um, I don't know that I do more detailed sketches than this. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like, you know, there's a lot of people that really perform like these cool painterly things mm -hmm. in Illustrator. Um, I'm super flat and like everything is just pretty simple in that nature. So yeah. it's a lot of just shapes. Um, I'll use Live Trace sometimes as a starting point, especially if I'm doing some like hand lettered stuff right. that I just don't want to start like mm -hmm. from scratch on. Right. Um, you want to keep a little bit of that. Yeah. personality to it. And I've got like this fear that like live trace is not good because it used to be not that great. Mm -hmm. And now re I did it the other day and it was like, oh, it's this is strong. like just as pretty much perfect. Mm -hmm. It used to have like a million points and stuff. Yeah. And you're now like, it's that's like, live traced. <laughs> yeah. Right. It looks like really janky, mm -hmm. but now it's like way better. So I used it the other day and it was actually really nice. So I will use it on occasion, but it's just not really conducive to what I'm doing. So I don't need it very often. Mm -hmm. um, and live paint, that was how I learned to do color at first. Mm -hmm. But again, I think it's gotten better, but I can't, it felt like I was committing too much. It, I felt like it wouldn't leave like outlines as outlines. It felt like it flattened things mm -hmm. a little too quickly. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is like, I can just change colors of things however I need. Easy um, peasy. Yeah. So you're not combining the shapes. You're just no. filling them all in. Yeah, I'm just fill, I'm, uh, I'm doing shift X. I don't even know if that's the proper thing to switch from like, uh, from outline to fill. Yeah. I think it's Shift X. So I'm just swapping so them back to fill shapes now that they're like this. But I may switch them back just so I can see a little bit better. Mm -hmm. I also think I need to uh, make all of these. I don't need brushes right now. That's for sure. <laughs> Get out of here, brushes. Um, I think maybe like 0.5 stroke that way. A little bit more precise. Yeah. Um, nice. Aram wants to know do you have an Instagram? I do. Um, Is it a Bone House? Yeah, it's Bone House. Uh, B O N E H A U S. There you go. Like, it's inspired by a Bauhaus, right? Yeah, the Bauhaus movement. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Is there That's more cool. of a story, or are you just like, I like Bauhaus, no, I like um, bones? Well, I think a lot of the work that I do uh, tends to be sort of collaborative. You know, I work with mm -hmm. a really close friend named Latham, uh, who does a lot of animation with me. I work right. with um, a sound designer that is a really good close friend of mine, um, especially when we do animation stuff. So I think taking from that Bauhaus the school of design was like a multidisciplinary mm -hmm. school, right? And um, I think like Bone House is like this little shed of like me and Scully, mm -hmm. but it can grow to be larger to like encompass friends temporarily to work on a project. Mm -hmm. So I think it also, you know, that sort of appeals to a client too in that our capabilities or my capabilities are that of my friends as yeah. well. And so it has that sort of multidisciplinary feeling to it. Right. And it's also like a misappropriation of the term too. It's like, I, I like the idea that I'm taking it and kind of breaking it and like mm -hmm. putting the umlaut over the U, which is totally not supposed to be there. Bone yowls. But it has this like <laughs> broken sort of like stolen yeah. vibe of it, which is a lot of yeah. sort of the ethos that I come from. A little irreverent. Yes, you like, I'm exactly. gonna just do what I want. Whatever the heck I want. <laughs> yeah, I'm a skeleton and my head's on upside yes, down. <laughs> exactly, and it helps me see better. Yeah, uh, Adam Moon Noah says, hello. Adam is um, a, um, 
a student, a fellow student of mine in the master's program, and he is welcome, Adam. Incredibly good at drawing with markers, and like oh. he like is. Whenever I go, he's always sketching like crazy, and he never stops, and he's so good. Mm. And he always tells me that he wishes he could be more like me, and I know it's a lie because <laughs> everyone should check out Adam. You know his work. It's flattering, it's mental. Yeah. He's like the, you know, a type of Instagram person where you're like, oh, this person, like, he's billions of followers because he just uses markers mm -hmm. and makes, like, Disney stuff. So, wow. Hey, Adam. That's awesome. Adam, do you have any work on your Behance? If so, everybody go yeah, click on his little on black that. and white face and check out his portfolio. Yeah, and if there's not anything there, go check him out on Instagram. He's there you go. Plug. All right, enough of this in. Baloney. Let's move on to Scully's. You got the jitters out? Feeling good? Yeah, I can draw a little bit now. <laughs> I guess I can um, draw a little. So, like, it's not, I mean, we can do pen tool for his head, but also maybe I can use this cool little shape to get, like, a proper arc. Um, oh, nice. It's tricky, because my work sometimes wants to be really clean and precise, but mm -hmm. also a little bit wonky, so it's kind of like I start with really clean shapes and then wonk them after. Yeah. Um, it helps, I think, there's just sort of a order to the chaos if you keep things organized, maybe. Gotcha. So uh, one of our previous guests, her name's Shauna X, and she has a similar thing where she'll, she wants to be very pre precise and uses the pen tool, but then she almost feels like a slave to it. So yes. her goal this year was to use the pen tool less mm. and to just draw um, accurately, but a little bit wonky. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely use it as a crutch, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's um, what I'm saying is you're using it as a crutch. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm not really that good at what I'm doing. <laughs> no, I mean, it's that's nice funny. because it's just so easy to manipulate things. Like, there's no way I could have drawn this the first time right. And maybe there's a yeah. beauty to the imperfection, and I definitely am a proponent of, like, imperfection being a cool thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it just, it especially with poses, we'll see maybe when we start doing his hands and stuff, we can kind of reposition arms and heads and stuff like that to get a better pose because right. it always kind of comes out static the first time. So. Mm -hmm. And that's what I also really like about illustrators. You can just you can just build a skeleton and then pose it. Pose it, yeah. you want. You can do it in Photoshop too, but this is a little, I don't know, maybe fits better with that workflow. I think so. Mm -hmm. Jesse is wondering if you have a name for this style of art. Oh, uh, stolen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely steal this from everyone. Inspired. Um, yeah, inspired by all, inspired by none. Uh, <laughs> I suppose if you wanted to find similar work to mine, um, I mean, it's, it's certainly inspired heavily by the golden era of cartooning and advertising, yeah. 1930s, 40s, 50s, mm -hmm. sort of Disney, Abai works, those sorts of things. Um, it's also, there's some, like, Cubism stuff that I'll take from it. There, it's it's certainly inspired by you know comic books and cartoons and mm -hmm. anime movies and uh, everything. Um, your whole schema, your zeitgeist. Yeah, everything <laughs> that makes up me. But um, yeah. I think like this is probably pretty similar to a lot of old Disney stuff, mm -hmm. a lot of or even uh, Warner Brothers, yeah. Looney Tunes mm -hmm. type stuff like that. But I think one person that I've been like ripping off a ton lately is. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of his name. <laughs> Gendy Tartarkovsky, is that how I spell it? But oh. um, he directed Samurai Jack. Oh, yeah. And I didn't even know about Samurai Jack until like uh, six months ago. What? Yeah, no, I had no idea. Everyone's like, oh, your work is like, you should look at Samurai Jack. And I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. And then I'm like, oh my God, this is everything. This did is you like miss perfect. the train? I really did. As a young and then when season human? five came back, I was like, I guess I'll check it out. And I realized that it is the best. So I think that's the person I probably. I actually didn't even mean to rip him off that much. I just found out about him a couple months ago, and I was like, oh, I've been stealing from this dude without realizing it well, forever. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I probably maybe also if you look at the people I follow, mm -hmm. whether it be on Behance or Dribble, Twitter, Instagram, yes. um, I probably tend to follow a lot of people that I'm inspired by. Yeah, so that's a really... So I don't have really... a name for it, but... I think you summed it up pretty well. <laughs> I don't think there is a name. Like, there's... A name requires flat? like a proper noun. Yeah. It's very flat. It's flat. Totally. Your friend Latham is here. Oh, cool. What's up? Heard a lot about you. Great uh, animation. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I have lots of friends in this. So sweet. Yeah. That makes me really happy. What's up, Monica? Monica is my partner. Awesome. Hi, She's Monica. Yeah. Over in outside of Boston. Stay warm. Actually, yeah. I heard that no, it's, it's warm, warm there. Yeah, she's holding it down with the puppies. Puppies? Yeah. Is it dog time? Time to talk about our dogs? <laughs> yeah. It comes around every stream. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what kind of dogs do you have? Uh, we have a, I guess she's a Rhodesian Ridgeback <gasps> mix. Ooh. Super smart, mm -hmm. super high energy. Yes. Um, she's a little bit older. She's, I think, seven. Aww. And we have a bear. We have a golden retriever who Aww. is a, just ridiculous bear. He's yeah. just so cuddly, Aww. such a baby. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
yeah, he's he's a, he's a blast. He's very cuddly. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, we just recently got a yard that they can play in. Yay! Uh, it's so wonderful. That's great that they have each play. other. Yeah, yeah, they're besties for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're big fans. Of Monica them. says Wicket is fast asleep at the moment. Of course he is. <laughs> he's a sweet angel boy. Oh, uh, Wayne says I have a new golden retriever puppy. Oh my gosh, they're great. All dogs are great, but boy, do I. <laughs> like really those like goldens. Golden Retriever. <laughs> I, uh, I went to Bali uh, a little while ago, and there's lots of dogs that are wearing street dogs and stuff, mm -hmm. but not many Golden Retrievers, but we saw one Golden Retriever. They ride on the motorcycles. Like, um, they just put their belly, like, across their... Like the motorcycle is driving this way, and mm -hmm. the dog is like this. Oh, and there was a golden retriever over. just yeah, just like lumped over like a blanket. And there was a golden retriever that just looked like a giant like rug, and he yeah. was just like, and he was so he was just such a good boy. I was gonna say he's probably like super pumped yeah. about it, just, just like being a good boy. This is the life. <laughs> so we have a Australian Shepherd, Ooh. and he's also very high energy and very smart. Yeah, sounds like he'd get, get along. Get into trouble, almost. Sometimes. Yes, you know he's too, too scared smart. of disappointing us the consequences, to do right. bad things, yeah. <laughs> which it makes him the perfect boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what a good boy does. Yeah, it's true. Uh, Iram wants to know, how did you learn Illustrator? Are you self-taught? Did you learn in school, tutorials? No, so um, my undergrad, again, was in computer science, so I came into this around like 2012 with no idea how to do any of this. Mm -hmm. I was into like Photoshop from a technical perspective, and like I would... And I like grew up in like video games and like yeah. forums, so making like signatures for your forum oh, yeah. or like Abbey's. avatars, mm -hmm. yeah, all that type of stuff. So I used Photoshop in that sense. Illustrator almost never. Um, mm. I learned through tutorials, just googling like tutorials. At first, I was always googling like retro illustration tutorial, but then I realized like it doesn't matter because yeah. you're just gonna apply it back to it. Um, mm. Monday through Friday, I remember during my day job, I would compile them. Mm. And then Saturday, I would just do a ton of them. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday, I would take what I learned and make a piece of my own, whether it be like an old oh. doodle in a notebook or something mm -hmm. like that. I'd be like, how can I apply what I learned that week into it? And then I shared it online a bunch and stuff like that and got a bunch of feedback. And like, I mean, now it's probably even easier with streams and like Twitch streaming yeah. and just like the internet in general. Mm -hmm. Not that it was really that much longer ago, but it's changed. But yeah, no, self-taught. Um, tutorials, lots of tutorials. There's so much information out there. Skillshare mm -hmm. is another pretty good one. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, there's lots of tutorials everywhere. For you. Do you find that Skillshare is worth the investment? Um, <laughs> <laughs> or is this? <laughs> no, it's it's cheap enough now. It's like I mean, you can get like 99 cents for like three months or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, I think it's pretty low overhead for price. Mm -hmm. um, it's usually pretty worth it. There's a lot of uh, archived stuff on there that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Um, some people's classes are just incredible. I think it's it's turned, it's gotten a lot larger where content is just not nearly as good. It's mm. like, there's a lot more and it's like people just like reposting tutorials. Yeah. And just like, it still has the same like bumper, like mm -hmm. they took it. They're like, oh, I made one for this thing, so I'll just throw it on here. I know. Before they used to be like classes. Um, but they're still on there, so they're worth it for that. Mm -hmm. I think there's just like a drop off where it yeah. starts not being worth it after a while. Right. But get like a free three month or like even a free month or whatever and just binge through them. Right. Um, it's yeah. fun to watch people work. But yeah, it's, it's worth checking out for sure. Gotcha. Ryan says, if you can, get your job to pay for your membership. Yeah. That's a good idea. And if nothing else, it's a business right off. I was going to say, I just did my taxes the other day and I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, should have deducted these things. <laughs> Video games are research. Yes. Uh, everything is something. Mm hmm. Yeah, so true. Or something. <laughs> Uh, Debang Su says that he loves the way that you got into Illustrator. Yes, it's oh, inspiring. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, like I said, Illustrator can be very scary to people. It intimidated me a lot for a while. I think mm -hmm. I tried to get into it like three or four times before fully committing to it. And mm -hmm. I was like, this just doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. It makes yeah. no sense whatsoever when mm -hmm. you start. Because I think you're used to the idea of drawing. Yep. And you're like, how do I make something a color? And you're like, yeah. I don't get it. And they're talking what about What is like, a stroke? Yeah, what the heck's a stroke? <laughs> really? <laughs> it took a long time for me to get into it. Um, but then once I did, I, it, I mean, I'm just afraid of if it ever goes away, I won't have a career. Adobe? Adobe will not go Are away. Are you here? <laughs> Keep the Illustrator here around. Forever. <laughs> uh, Carol says, Kirk Wallace is a genius. Oh, Agree? Totally. Thoughts? <laughs> Comments? <laughs> Everyone should go to my portfolio and find the piece that they like the least and tell me Ooh. why they dislike it. Is that a real thing that you want sure. them to do? Everyone should. Yeah, I feel like everyone should be taken down a notch mm -hmm. in their life because it's... But I appreciate all the praise and I, I really thank 
you for even checking out my work. I really uh, appreciate that. Yeah, that's but awesome. I always like to hear negative feedback, too, or, or constructive feedback, rather. Right. Or if you want to tear me apart, go ahead. <laughs> That'd be funny, too. It needs to happen every yeah. once in a while. Yeah, everyone needs to be taken down. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> but uh, on a more positive note, chat, we do have a giveaway in about 20 minutes. Oh, cool. Not yet. But soon, we're going to be asking you to get the hype going. We're going to be giving away a lovely Photoshop Ooh, pillow. pillow. That's cool. I know. Very nice Everyone and squishy, plush. Great for an accent chair, a little mm -hmm. splash of color in a room. Yep. Need it. Give it to your pup to sleep on. Yeah. My dog loves pillows, and he always tries to steal ours. So I'm like, I need one of these so he can just have a little yeah. mini pillow. All for him. Dogs like know how to use pillows sometimes, so you can see them like, like, yes. like how did you get in that position? And you're like, oh, you, you did it. Like, I'm happen. snuggled now. Yeah. What are you talking about? Uh, so all we'll ask you to do is get logged in on Behance. Make sure you're watching us over on Behance, be.net slash live. You could go to behance.net, click on the live tab, and sign in, say hello in chat. Like I said, we'll be giving that away in about 20 minutes. And we also have about uh, in a little less than an hour, <laughs> like trying to do math on the fly, not my strong point. That's Kirk's strong point. <laughs> Uh, a little less than an hour to get your submissions in for your superhero challenge. So today's challenge is to create a superhero in either Photoshop or Illustrator. We've got an Illustrator template for you in the challenge tab. So go ahead and download that, work on it, get your superhero going. We've already got a ton of submissions for this stream, so we'll Make probably... It weird. Yeah. Make something weird and whatever. Unexpected. Superhero can be crazy, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's fun. Definitely. So you have less than an hour. I get those submitted, and if you don't get it shown during this stream, we will show it in the next stream, et cetera, et cetera. Tomorrow's theme will be totally different, though, so be ready for that. I've been looking at them. I've been peeking at the submissions in there. Pretty <laughs> cool. Excited to show you. So I'm, um, I'm just pen tooling like crazy right now. Mm -hmm. I'm going a little bit off um, sketch sometimes. Mm. It, you know, I've made it, so I kind of know what I was looking for. Right. Sketches are always just like a rough thing. Mm -hmm. um, the idea is for this character, Scully, to be obviously meditating, um, kind of happily, sort of half winking, and sort of wearing like a, like a Tibetan monk mm -hmm. sort of uh, garb. Um, so there's going to be, I want to kind of get some folds and stuff like that mm -hmm. in it, so I, this is where I might end up kind of freestyling a little bit on what how I want to draw it, but I just want like some layers, that way I can get some shadows and highlights in yeah. the clothing and stuff like that. Right, are you actually using layers within Illustrator or just nope. layering objects? Um, I do a lot of cut and then paste behind oh, and cut and paste in front. That mm -hmm. way I have like a sort of mental map of where things might be. Mm -hmm. um, and I may use layers later once I export to Photoshop, but right. for the most part groups I use a ton of, especially mm. once I get a little bit further into detail, like this whole head will probably be a group that way. I can sort of move it if I want them to be looking down or looking up or right. whatever. Um, I group a lot and I cut and paste in front really often. Mm -hmm. But layers themselves, not very often. Photoshop, yeah, but Illustrator, I don't really think so. Gotcha. I personally don't really use layers in Photoshop or <laughs> Illustrator either. Use them a lot in Photoshop. I have to. <laughs> yeah, Kelsey's like, how many people actually use layers in Illustrator? There's a use case, I think but not me. It's more, I guess it's like a necessity sometimes, maybe, if you're saying something off the print and you've got yeah. like stuff like that for, for production. Sure. Yeah, for production, but, um, or animation as well, of course, um, when you're importing mm -hmm. into like After Effects, mm -hmm. they're way important. So they're pivotal to be there, but the nice thing is that you're just mainly pasting things in front and back of stuff mm -hmm. and, or sending to back or whatever. Right, uh, Latham says it's beneficial for animators. Uh, yeah. Totally. He taught me, uh, I think he probably used to get a little frustrated. Yeah, he's like, come on, there, Kirk. Where he's like, this is like a mess, and mm -hmm. you expect him to animate this? I'm like, well, yeah, can you just get it done? Hurry up. Chop, chop, sir. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> uh, Thomas says, I use a lot of Photoshop layers in Illustrator. Wait, PF layers. PF. What does that mean, Thomas? I don't know. Educate I, us. I want to debunk it. <laughs> Um, Brad says layers are great for hiding elements. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you that's just great. Turn things on a lot and of off. like reference stuff. Yeah, I oh, try yeah. to keep all my reference stuff on a separate layer that mm -hmm. we can turn it on and off. Mm -hmm. um, or yeah, anything that's not getting used, I try to move off of my uh, layer that I'm working on. Gotcha. Um, Dio Gracias says that you have great projects on Behance. Uh oh, thank you. Yeah, that leads to kind of another question of social media and what you found is most beneficial for you to keep updated to mm -hmm. get like work 
What yeah. do you like the most? Sure. Um, I was just talking to this with a, your friend Adam the other day about like what to post where right. and not to like duplicate stuff mm -hmm. and like I kind of like sort of this sort of triangle where like your portfolio is like the the best of the best mm -hmm. or like the most refined. Usually I try to do a case study on it because I find that case studies help people that are maybe at an earlier stage than me kind of learn how something gets built. Mm. I think it helps art directors see the way that you think and therefore right. when they're hiring you. Mm -hmm. I think it also helps us just get our value in general um, out there of like maybe I also work with like smaller, like I might work directly with a CEO sometimes on a company mm -hmm. and he may, I mean he builds companies but he may not know, he or she may not know how much work goes into say a logo for the best instance, right? That Nike swoosh or that Apple mm -hmm. bite or mm -hmm. whatever, or even this, it seems like, oh, you just draw it, so just do it. But I think by putting like case studies on your site, you can show like, no, this is like a iterative process yeah. that can take 30, 40, 100 hours, mm -hmm. uh, depending. So website kind of gets all the best work like mm -hmm. that. And then it kind of goes out like that where something maybe like Instagram gets probably the most. Mm -hmm. um, I think the key more than anything is just defining what you think first and writing that down for yourself. Mm. That way, you know what to do for the day of like, right. oh, here's, you know, you want to inject some of your life in certain things or you don't, whatever you want to do, but just to find those things, to find those traits. I talk a lot about inspiration, sketches, process, and I also, you know, create your tone of how you want to talk on your social media. Mm -hmm. And I think mine probably comes through, most people's do, but it's nice if you define that up front and that's all about like creating systems for yourself mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And, um, but yeah, I mean, I use Dribble a lot. Um, I use Behance a lot. Um, but Behance gets more refined stuff, longer, mm -hmm. bigger projects. Right. Uh, Dribble is more shots. Instagram is kind of everything with a little bit of like dogs and stuff like mm -hmm. that. A little um, bit of life. So what do you mean shots on Dribble? Oh, for Dribble, like more just like, hey, here's a quick shot of what I'm working at. Oh, or, like uh, a screenshot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, um, also just sports? me playing hoops. <laughs> just doing slam dunks all <laughs> just day. Just show people how good I am at dribbling <laughs> Check out my dribble. hoops. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I... I, I that's more of like a snip into what I'm working on. Gotcha. And I think that's kind of all that I use for the most part. And Twitter is more conversational, but again, I try to always sort of put an image in there just because I think it's more interesting for people to see images. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I think defining what you want to do up ahead in front um, and look at what other people are doing. That right. Are, you know. But yeah, I mean, you have to use it if you want to be a freelancer. Right, you know, true. It's so shameful sometimes. It, <laughs> it's tough. It feels weird, you know, promoting your work and stuff, but uh, it beats the heck out of doing something you don't want to do. Right. Doing a job you don't love. Very true. It's part of the, the path you have chosen. Yes. But personally, I love Instagram. Like, yeah. it's very inspirational for yeah. me to look at, make friends on, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Jimmy is asking, did we find out how he's closing off shapes like that? Oh, no. Um, what but are that's you a great doing? <laughs> I'm pushing F1. So I made like an action that oh. is a keyboard shortcut to uh, unite. Mm -hmm. So I have F1, F2, F3, and F4 as actions. Let's find out how we do that. Uh, I also figured out, so, oh gosh, I forget his name. Oh my God. Somebody made this stupid action for me that lets me keyboard shortcut stroke up and stroke down, oh. stroke with, and mm -hmm. it's the best thing in the entire world. That's I'm so awesome. happy about it. And I'm <laughs> so sorry that I forget your name, but you were, oh gosh. And he's like a friend, like a Twitter friend. Like, I just can't think of the name. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've got the like unite, intersect, exclude, and minus front all as keyboard shortcuts. I think if I go to like button mode, you can see them. Yeah, F1, F2, F3, F4. Yeah, so I'm basically like if I make a Thing like that, highlight it and push F1, it'll close it off because it's like uniting. Oh, I've so, never used Pathfinder in that way. Yeah. That's so cool. I don't know how I figured out that like it just closes the thing off, mm -hmm. but it's nice for like, I don't know if I were making, you know, a bowl and then just want to just go mm -hmm. So it just like takes the most direct route. Too. Yeah, just like the shortest yeah, vector. Totally. So yeah, that's how I'm doing it. Um, keyboard shortcut, but effectively I'm just using Pathfinder Unite. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like there's this accuracy thing where like having to hit that last point for me sometimes is a little tricky. Yeah. So I'd rather just be wherever and just have fun. Yeah, you know it's going to work. Yeah. And even if it's shaving off like hundredths of a second. It's worth it. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Ryan says, nice tip. Oh, yeah. Good. Agreed. Yeah. Invest in your setup. Invest in your software. Invest in your systems. All that stuff. Time savers are huge. I think so too. Especially when you're trying to do it for a living. Right, I think time savers 
are also, they kind of give you no excuse not to work. Because a lot of times yeah, I'll right. sit down and be like, oh, this is going to be so hard to build. I have to yeah. do all these things and do all these workarounds. And it's like, no, if I have it set up, there's no excuse. Yeah, it's just me. <laughs> yeah, all you have to do is execute. Enough. That's yeah. it. Yeah, that's the best thing. Mm -hmm. you no. Know. That's why the idea phase is always the scariest, because mm -hmm. there's no shortcut to like coming up with a good idea. You just yeah. have to have a bunch of bad ideas for a long time until a good one comes up. Totally. If you're confident in the your tools of execution, yes. if it's Illustrator or just drawing and painting, it should be the in my opinion, like the easiest part is actually like execute. laying down the big things. Totally. Mm -hmm. Completely agree. Very rarely do I get to a point where I don't know how to make something work, like mm -hmm. happen, like but I also, you know, I've sort of, I think, kind of defined a little bit of a style for myself, knowing that like, I, I'm never gonna have like a crazy rendered like, because you know, there's some stuff where I'm like, I don't know how I'm gonna render that. This will look like a real skull. Mm -hmm. But again, I've kind of defined that I don't need to. So I'm like, I can make that shape because I got the pen tool. Right. Do you ever have clients ask you ask you to do things that you're like, that is not within my brand or? <sighs> At, for, for a long time, I did. Mm -hmm. I'm really lucky and fortunate that n lately, no. Um, mm -hmm. Most people come to me, um, you know, I think that's like goes to like personal work too. Like, your portfolio should only have what you want to get as work in it. True. So don't put work just because you think it's good. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm I'm doing that. Like some of the work buried in my Behance, I've got like these things that like a lot of people like and they have a lot of views and there's like this vanity to it. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I really need to remove that because I don't want to do more of that like yeah. super simple work or like mm -hmm. tattoos for a long time was something I kept getting work for. Didn't want to do it, so I had to remove them all. So, um, <laughs> So he's now doing tattoo no, commissions, no, 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 everyone. Gosh. No, it's, it's too <laughs> Just tough kidding. for me. Um, but um, my point is, is that I've got a pretty well curated portfolio. Mm -hmm. So I think there's very little wiggle room for somebody to come in and be like, hey, I think it'd be great to make this like super hyper render mm -hmm. human face that is wicked on point and right. this is where it should be. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just not the way I'm going to do it. No, um, no. And if I do, uh, it's nice to have like a pool of friends and illustrators that I can be like, I can't, but this person would be awesome to do it. Yes. And they'll do the same for you and stuff. So, yeah. Um, but no, luckily, for the most part, I get excellent inquiries. That's and they're awesome. usually based off personal work, which is like a really nice, uh, it's always a nice thing when like a client that you really adore says like, hey, we really love that personal thing you did. Mm -hmm. You want to do that for us and we'll pay you a bunch of money? And you're like, like, oh gosh, yeah, it's more I did the that same. for free the yeah, first time. <laughs> right, I already did it once for free. I'll do it again for money. Easy. Yeah, yes. definitely. Uh, Elena is wondering, what do you think about giving an illustration to a publisher in exchange for being mentioned in the publication, uh, specifically when you're not a well-known illustrator? <sighs> there's, it's, it's there's a struggle. It's not, all, I speak from a, place of um, privilege, I think, in that I'm a working illustrator right now. Mm -hmm. I've worked hard to get to it, but I also realize that it's not always easy. And I've had the privilege of, like, I had a pretty quick start to my career. Like, mm -hmm. I started making stuff, people started hiring me, and I'm super lucky for that. I know that there's people that it's not quite as easy, mm -hmm. and I've struggled as well. <sighs> so, it's a it's a tough, it, like exposure is fine sometimes, but like these companies have money. That's the problem is that they have the yeah. money and you can get the money. Sometimes, um, I was just talking to a friend of mine who got like a logo bid mm -hmm. for like $200 or something like that. And it came and they ended up, it ended up being thousands instead. It was like, yeah. no, I can't do it for 200, but mm -hmm. I'm happy to do it for 4,000 yeah, or whatever. <laughs> and they're like, oh, okay. So a lot of people just don't, you know, <laughs> you're yeah. worth money if you're, you know, if they're if they're reaching out to you, then they want you to work for them. So mm -hmm. make sure that you're letting them know that you're worth that. So yeah. I, I say no in general, um, you know, and if they are a client or a magazine or a publication that is, you'd be impressed by the exposure you could get, mm -hmm. you know, I, I would be so happy if I could get a New Yorker cover or something. But at the same time, because that exposure would be so great, I know that they're probably a company that has money and they have a budget. Yeah, right. And so it's your job to get that. And don't feel bad about asking for money for your work. This is hard work. This is work that's intensive. And mm -hmm. um, I say no in general. Um, and make sure you get paid for what you do because you're yeah. worth it. Especially Definitely. if they're reaching out to you. There's a reason why they're, you wouldn't, Someone wouldn't mow your lawn for free. Like, right. They're gonna do anything else for free. Totally. And they're making money off of you. So mm -hmm. I say no. Yes. Shut it down. Agreed. Concurred. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, Kelsey is wondering, did you start animating your illustrations right away, or how did you get into that process? Do you do any of the animation? Um, I can animate a little bit. I can. <laughs> yeah, well, Lathan, I think, is maybe in the chat, so I'm like, I don't want you going to be like, he can't do it. You're like, oh, yeah, I've animated <laughs> everything in my portfolio. <laughs> no, um, you know, I, I, I can do some animation, and uh, it's something I want to do more of. And um, this project that we're working on, Latham's helping me a lot with the thesis and mm -hmm. this whole thing. So um, he's kind of helping me too, like giving me little things like, why don't you do the smoke cloud? Or why don't you Aww, do these things? And, and then we work on it. Yeah, it's really great. So um, I'm learning animation more. I've been doing it for a while. So I probably am more proficient. I know it a lot better than I do it. Oh, interesting. Like, I can, sometimes I'll look over Latham's shoulder or whatever mm -hmm. and be like, why don't you do it this way? And he would be like, why don't you animate things? Because you know how to do it. <laughs> they don't do it often. Um, he says, please don't phase me out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, he's way too good. I don't, it's not, like, going to happen. He, he's, like, and he's way too dear of a friend. Like, he's so good at animating. And um, which kind of, to that point, has made me not really want to learn at night quite as much because it's there's a value to his. He's good at yeah. animating and designing and illustrating. And I'm good at illustrating, so right. why not let that work? Um, yeah. But to more to the original question, uh, I just you just decide like how you you can you can make an animation with two frames. Like if you want Sally yeah. to wave, you mm -hmm. just do this and this, mm -hmm. and then figure out the in betweens and stuff. So it's more about I think animation for me is more a catalyst to make something fun and exciting. Like yeah. It's not like, I want to animate. It's, I want to tell this story. Mm -hmm. How do I need to do it? Oh, crap, I have to open up After Effects and yeah. get into it. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, use every, everything is After Effects for me. Um, and I started pretty quickly after I was illustrating. Mm -hmm. It kind of comes, you make a character, and you're like, oh, that'd be cool to see it move. Right. Um, but reaching out, and like I think collaborations in that sense, speaking on the term like unpaid work, I think like collaborating with like a creative and being like, hey, I made, like, I know Latham, how we met was he reached out to me and was like, hey, I really like your work. Can I animate some of it? And I was like, absolutely. Yeah. And then now we're like super close friends as a result. Mm -hmm. So like reaching out and somebody may reach, I think it's probably you don't reach out to somebody, hey, do you want to animate my work? Mm -hmm. But maybe if you're an animator and you're not, you feel like your illustrations aren't super strong right. and you want to, but you want practice, maybe reach out to someone and say, hey, can I animate a thing? Same goes with like 3D modelers. A lot of 3D modelers right. will ask them and be like, hey, can I make your character in 3D? Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, it's why would you say I'm no? Like, Gosh, <laughs> I'm just waiting for a puppet maker to come. Hi, I want to make a puppet, but I don't have a character. Can I just make Scully into a puppet for you? And they're like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That. So are you thinking like a paper puppet or want, like, like full? A, like, pro like a felt. Like puppet, like cool. Frog. Yeah, so that would be awesome. You, know. you hear that, chat? Any puppeteers or yeah. puppet? And I will. Makers? Yeah, that is a paid job. That is very <laughs> hard. I would love to meet any puppet makers that are interested in collaborating and making that. That's awesome. Do you have like so many in-depth questions in chat. I don't even know. Oh, I'm happy which to. ones <laughs> to ask. I'm leaving it up to you. Uh, let's it. see. Miriam is asking, do you have any tips for beginners? So they're volunteering as a graphic designer now, and okay. they don't appreciate what she does, mm. and they want her to copy other brands instead yeah. of creating their own visual identity. Mm -hmm. How do you battle that? Yeah, it's tough. Um, it's hard because it's like somebody else's. Yeah, thing. earlier in my career, I said the career is a dumb word, <laughs> <laughs> three years ago. Uh, but when I was, you know, earlier on or getting started or whatever, I think that happened more often. And um, I think I did it once and I was like, this is gross. Uh, and it wasn't like s quite stealing or anything, but it just felt not my own. Mm -hmm. And um, I worked a day job for a long time that allowed me to say no to work, which was really helpful. Yeah. The ability to that power of saying no is super important. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I think you can also make a really strong case for why it's important to carve out. I think, if I'm not mistaken, it was that brand needs to make their own identity, right? Mm -hmm. Their own illustration style or their own brand identity or whatever. I think you can make a strong case, even if it's just a matter of like sending links to, I mean, like Shopify has a really great MailChimp, like all yeah. these brands have these awesome illustration styles. Dropbox mm -hmm. is another really great one. You can share that and be like, these people are trailblazers not followers and yeah. I mean I, I, it's a hard thing to argue against like no we should definitely be copying and I get there's budgetary restrictions mm -hmm. and stuff but make a strong case for it and um, I don't know don't get yourself fired and you know nothing is right. worth jeopardizing that but and if you don't feel like you're creatively satisfied in your day job go home and draw and let that overweigh everything yeah. else that's how you stay excited yeah yeah personal drawing. work is huge and yeah just doing your own things mm -hmm. Um, I'm getting a little bored of drawing Scully, so I'm going to 
jump over to some lettering. Perfect. Which maybe will be different curves or something interesting like that. Yeah, that's a great segue actually, because it is 12 o'clock, which means oh, cool. it's giveaway time. <laughs> There's music playing in the background, and we can't hear it, but you can. So I'm <laughs> dancing saying. to it right now. <laughs> yeah, there actually is. So chat, make sure you are logged in on Behance, be.net slash live. We'll bring you right here, right into our own backyard. So make sure you're over there, sign in with your Adobe ID, your Behance login, and you could win. Get a that. free, yes, you can get this for free. for free. Photoshop pillow, we're gonna pick someone randomly. All you have to do is say something in chat. So click on the chat tab, Just let us know. A bunch of gibberish. Yeah, and you only have to say one thing, so. Only type once. Yeah, I mean, you could say multiple things, but don't think that that gives you more submissions. Everyone is getting so excited. <laughs> um, maybe you can let us cool. know, what should they tell us? I just feel like it's just gonna go. That's <laughs> We're true. Not gonna um, whoever can. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What's a good question for them to answer? A one-word response. Hmm. Not. Nah, what's your favorite color? But. Ooh. What's your favorite Adobe product? Sure. Go. What's your favorite Adobe product? Let us know. And Adobe Live will be using a magical Adobe script to pick a random name, and we will present that name to you in just a moment. Who someone says, I love Adobe. Aw, <laughs> so kind. Everyone is pumped. So there's about 1,900 of you watching. We need 1,900 lines of chat, please. And if you haven't signed in yet, this is a great time to pop over to your second monitor where you have this playing. Yes. Sign in, say something. You could win. Also, do not fret if you do not win this time because we do a giveaway during every stream. That means there are two more chances to win today and then there's always tomorrow and the next day. All right, chat, you are going wild and we have our name. It is picked. Would you like to pick or say the winner's name? I can't read. Oh, Ryan O'Donnell. <laughs> Ryan cool. O'Donnell. Ryan S. O'Donnell. I feel if like there Ryan are... S. O'Donnell is a familiar name to me. Tell me if I know you. <laughs> Do I know you? But you got a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, congratulations, you are yeah. the winner of this Photoshop pillow. Adobe team, or Adobe Live will be in contact with you uh, via your Behance messages. So get on the lookout for that. Get comfy. There's like gracious, uh, gracious losers. Or like, yes. <laughs> They're like, congrats. Everyone's like, congratulations, that's so cool. I'd mm -hmm. be like, this is baloney. This is rigged, yeah. bye. Well, what is this? <laughs> I'm calling the police. <laughs> You're illegal, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Uh, and also, since it is 12, that means there's 30 more minutes to get your contest or challenge submissions sent over to us. Uh, I'll probably pop through a couple of these since we do have quite a few cool. options. So today's challenge is superhero. We want you to create a superhero in Illustrator or Photoshop using the template that we have for you as a jumping off point. Go to the challenge tab, be.net slash live, click on the challenge tab. All the info is there and maybe we can pop over to my screen and look at some of these while you get started on that lettering. Yeah. So this is a superhero of the Black Widow. Oh. So a cute little kind of chibi version of her. Scar Jo, have nice. they been doing this for, how long have they been working on this? Uh, they've had an hour so far. Wow, what do you got? look at me. Right, <laughs> look at you, outlines. look at chat. Wow, good job. So they That's did awesome. start with a template, which, okay, cool. I mean, I guess you did too, because you have yeah, a sketch. Yeah, I did too, so <laughs> great job, everyone. All right, we've got Sloth Gal and Lab Lobster Lad. Nice. I love that. Wow, those are some cool masks. Sloth Girl moves so slow that <laughs> she can't even see and her. It's a great little like pajama outfit on mm -hmm. the bottom there, too. Yeah. Reminds me of home movies. Yeah. That's nice. I like that. Nice job. This is by Maria. We've got Superstar Ooh. Girl. These mm. are great colors. Nice palette, Maria. Yeah, I love that chin shadow. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, nice there's some little tiny yeah, details. details. For such a flat and kind of cartoony style, it really brings that, that extra brings level. Yeah. <laughs> We've got, let's see, is this Adobe? It must be Adobe Man. Adobe Human. Adobe Fellow. Nice job, Jane. <laughs> Very cool. Are they in San Francisco? Does this Adobe Man lurk in the, <laughs> the corners <laughs> of the Adobe offices? <laughs> this is by Eduardo. Let's see, Ooh. so she turns oh, into cute. this creature and he turns into this creature. That's it. Nice. I think that bottom one is real cool. I think weird. it's cool too. Super yeah. bizarre. There's something feminine about it, and it's not the fact that it's pink. No, it's got this cool, it's a shape language. Yeah. That's what's so great about shapes. Mm -hmm. They communicate. Nice job, Eduardo. Right, I'm a rule. This is Velocity Man, and he is <laughs> not happy to be here. Wow. <laughs> Transformative. Mm hmm. 
Nice. A nice V. Mm -hmm. like yeah. That. Like the little texture on his outfit. It looks like repeated Vs oh, cool. for Velocity Man. Patterns. Nice. The nice text is very reminiscent of Kunks. Alrighty, let's see. This is super sketchy. <laughs> he, it looks like, oh, I thought he was sleeping, like he was an exhausted artist. No, he's flying. He's flying. He's got an Apple Pencil and an iPad Pro. <laughs> nice, gives you superpowers. This is by Andrew. Let's see, this might be maybe Ooh. Butterfly Girl. Oh. Some sort of elf princess. Cool necklace. Mm-hmm, nice little amulet of power. Yes. Nice job, Andrew. This is by Ryan, one of our frequent winners here on Adobe Live. <laughs> Captain Ice Block. Nice. Thanks. Powerful. Mm hmm. Too cold. <laughs> Too cold for my liking. It's by <laughs> Natalia. This is Whoa. Superman. Nice. Super finance man. Mm hmm. <laughs> so I see there's some kryptonite, maybe, some papers some from taxes. the Daily Planet. Yeah. <laughs> some of his Clark Kent glasses. That's cool. He looks like a little cutout. Nice job, Natalia. Oh, I love this little paper oh, nice. shield. That's this cool. is Child Warrior. Yeah, that's cute. Mm -hmm. A little pencil armed with the important stuff. <laughs> Education. Nice, really cute uh, shape character, shape language. Round and playful. This is Derelict Man. Everything oh. he touches turns to ew. Wow. That's, neat. <laughs> that's <Wow>. very interesting. <laughs> nice. Instead of a green thumb, he has trash thumb. A trash thumb. <laughs> awesome. This is by David, Canadian super national hockey player. Nice. Oh, cool. His own superhero. <laughs> Although the US did beat Canada in the Canada? Olympics, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> nice job. This is Mouse Boy. Oh, <laughs> Mouse Boy. Awesome. Yeah, this Black Panther back there being wow. like, hey. That one's super fun. Mm -hmm. All the colors, simple colors are great. Really cute. And then this is Be the Planet. Hero Planet. Oh, nice. So it's animated. Oh, wow. Cool. Okay. Well, Protect it, Captain role, Planet. Animator. <laughs> I know. <laughs> this is Latham's territory. <laughs> Excuse you. So nice job, everyone. I will curate down this list and we'll keep looking at them as the challenges are submitted. So you have about 20 minutes to get those in. Keep working, keep submitting. This is going to be a tough decision. Look at these letters you've pin tooled while I was there jabbering on. <laughs> um, so I guess there's something I can find to talk about in these letters. Um, again, I'm trying to, I think every once in a while people might notice that I'm like uh, removing shapes really quickly. So if I were to say go like this and make this curve all the way around like that, um, like this point I can just remove. Um, that's an astute graphics thing. Like, oh. You can kind of, I think there's like the smoothing tool in Illustrator, you can kind of remove some points. Um, the astute graphics stuff has like mastered it that like it really doesn't change it very much at all. Mm -hmm. In fact, it just makes it a little smoother. Nice. And um, so I'm like every once in a while, I'm kind of like removing points and that's how I'm doing that so quickly. Gotcha. Oh, people in chat are choosing their own favorite superheroes. They like Mouse Boy, Iceman. Let's see, Mouse Boy got another one. Cool, everybody likes Mouse Boy. Yeah, good Mouse too. Boy good. Uh, where is the template? If you go to the challenge tab at be.net slash live, there is a link to an Illustrator template, I believe. So check that out. Matthias says, Gus is my hero. Yes, our, <laughs> our own Gus is the hero of chat. We've got Paco, the hero of the studio. <laughs> Me, the hero of sitting next to artists. Chit -chat. Yes, chit-chat, Chit -chat. Kit Kat. It's me. Chatty. <laughs> Chatty Kathy? Chatty Kathy. Is that my superhero <laughs> name? No. <laughs> no, that's a good thing. Chatting's cool. Yeah. Chatting's uh, super. Yeah. It's tough. It's the hardest job in the world. Just kidding. Super easy. Uh, Nancy, did we receive yours? Yes, we did. We got your submission. It came in right after I got done showing all of the submissions, so don't think that I skipped it. We will show it next. B. Gray says, Kirk is my hero. Super uh, Kirk. B. Gray. B. Gray may or may not be a very dear friend of mine. I think Although he might be because anonymous. He was saying some trolly things, and oh, I was like, either he knows Kirk or he's just being a silly boy. Oh, ban him. <laughs> Getting ban him banned. Uh, Sheldon, we keep skipping your questions. I'm sorry about oh, that. Please ask all, again. Write it in all caps. Yeah. It's the easiest way to be heard. 
Uh, Jeffrey says, win or lose, it's always a pleasure participating. I agree. Oh, it's the most mature thing I've ever heard, especially <laughs> in 2018. Right? I told you this chat was awesome. Yeah. Not poisonous at all. No. But seriously, I think entering these challenges, even if you don't win, it's a great opportunity no, to add something to your portfolio if you are if you think it's strong enough, or you can continue to work yeah, on it. Yeah, work on it later, yeah. Mm-hmm. Great. All right, Elena, see you later, and enjoy your dinner. Bye, Elena. Dinner. <laughs> dinner. <laughs> it is lunchtime. Although it probably feels a little closer to dinner for you. Yeah, I guess a little bit. I don't know. I'm so confused. <laughs> I'm not eating for I feel so many things. <laughs> I will say that this has been a lot nicer and simpler than I thought. Right. I was nervous for anyone that may have been questioning. I was very nervous about this. Didn't show. And <laughs> right, chat? I, I hope not. <laughs> Unnatural. But, but it's way fun. Cool. We hope that the guests have fun here at Adobe Live. So far. It's a fun show. So far. <laughs> Just wait till tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and everything changes. That's when we... <laughs> so before we started, I was telling Kirk that you guys were going to be working on superheroes. And he thought I was saying that he had to wait, work no, on a superhero. No, I've got a whole plan here, and now uh, I have to make a superhero? <laughs> I was like, just kidding. Got to like, okay, scrap it all. I guess Scully is a superhero now. <laughs> we would never <laughs> until tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to do it um, in an app you've never used before. Yeah, totally. And you can't use a computer. <laughs> right, you have to actually draw it. <laughs> um, Aaron says, Sheesh, Kirk is fast at this. Do oh, you agree? That's good. Well, I did up until I saw like a bunch of people make a bunch of stuff in like a half hour, <laughs> yeah. and I was like, "Oh, I'm very slow." Uh, um, I do. I tell clients that I work fast. I don't know if that's just a, a marketing tool for myself. Mm. Oh, yeah, I work very quickly. But I think um, as long as I have a tight sketch, then I'm good. My sketching process and idea process is brutal. Um, really brutal in what way? It, it's brutal in a time sense. It just takes me a long time to really figure it out. And then even when I figure it out, I'm like, I don't know if this is really the perfect idea, but right. you just kind of got to go with it. I have that problem too. It's tough. Perfect idea doesn't yeah. exist. Yeah, it doesn't exist. That's <laughs> absolutely right. Um, so yeah, I think I, I vector quick for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Keyboard shortcuts help me. <laughs> We've got our next guest in the house. We've got Lydia. Everyone stick around. We have oh, awesome oh. guests for the rest of the day and for the rest of the week. Chat, are you excited for this illustration week? Because I sure am. I'm also excited that next week is more illustration. Oh, double illustration yeah. week. Desktop, mobile, which is like oh, yeah, really? my real love. That's yeah. gonna be baller week. Matthias is not a fast worker. No, you shouldn't be. <laughs> you shouldn't to slow down a little bit here. <laughs> yeah. So I was actually going to ask you: Do you find that telling your clients that you work fast can that ever be a detriment to you, where they are like, "Well, I don't have to pay you as much." Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, you know, I realized like I think I might have said that the last time I remember saying that was like years ago. I, mm. remember, I, I guess that was when I dealt with hourly more often, and now I've kind of gotten rid of that out of my life. I don't. I, I, I'm sure people could argue otherwise, but I don't think hourly pay is a, a good thing for illustrators. Cool. Um, so now it, I don't know, I, I said that thinking of myself in 2014 or something, I used to say that often mm -hmm. to clients, but I don't, I don't think it comes up anymore. Um, and uh, on that topic of like just deadlines in general, I don't find myself, I know a lot of, there's like a trope that like freelancers hate deadlines and they're brutal and they have to, but I don't find that very often either. So. I don't find myself having to tell people that I'm fast anymore mm -hmm. or anything like that. I don't, I don't get that sense of like, yeah. it's more just an existential dread of my own, like this isn't good. <laughs> so that's the main okay. issue of anything. Still an issue. So, yeah, so it's still a terrible issue, but um, I think that probably could be a problem though, like you said, if I did continue to say that. Mm -hmm. The good thing I just lied to everyone and said I said I say this all the time, <laughs> yeah. just kidding. So we got Sheldon's question. Oh good. No, he was wanting us to answer this. Yeah, please. Uh, was there, is this, was there a distinct moment when you realized you had a specific style? Or was it hard to find your style? It seems like clients tend to desire some sort of style versus someone's skill set. Yeah. A lot of the style, so right off the bat, um, it's only through people telling me that I have a style that I think I have a style. Oh, um, yeah. It, it, it's the same with people talking about color, like, oh, you're so good with color, but any if you ever tell it to someone, like, oh, well, I don't know how to use colors, so that's interesting <laughs> that you say that. So I think even with style, it's, the style's inherent. I think it's your DNA, it's what you do. The, the only th thing that's you wouldn't, the only thing that you could create that wouldn't be your own style would be if you're copying or if mm -hmm. you're biting too hard. 
which is a great way to practice, but not a great way to, to progress. Um, right. Uh, in its own right. Um, so, I don't know that I even, I, I guess I have a style. For a long time, I didn't think I did. Mm -hmm. A lot of people tell me I do. I suppose inherently, just by nature, everyone does. Right. Um, I don't know that I s like seeked out trying to define that style, mm -hmm. other than just doing what I thought was cool and what was interesting, and kind of not worrying about, to an extent, what other people would think. Mm -hmm. um, but to his other question of like, I clients like a style. I think that's half and half, or you know, I think it's shifting towards that. A lot of people want because there's so many people. There's so many people in the world, so many illustrators that there's no need to hire someone that doesn't do that style for that style. Right. Just find the person that's good at it. Yeah. Um, so I think it's important that you have a voice and all that stuff for sure, mm -hmm. um, and make sure that it's your own because you don't want to get hired by like your dream client, and they're like, yeah, cool, do this like super simple minimal. If you don't want to do that, mm -hmm. you want them to say like, we want you to do what you do mm -hmm. for us. So make sure you're doing whatever you want to be doing, especially in illustration. I think graphic design may be a different story. Yeah. I think it's a little bit more like, an illustration still is a problem and a solve, and I, I consider myself a designer, mm -hmm. illustrator. It's, there's a task and there's a appropriate. It's also like I'm not going to do, I, I don't know, a children's book in a really drab mm -hmm. style. You know, there's a certain, of course, we have a job and an execution that's appropriate right. for certain things, but... Um, yeah, just make sure that you're doing what you enjoy so that you can get hired for it and then you can do exactly what you want to do for a living. I agree. And I've, possible. I'm a very strong believer in letting your hand make the kind of work that it wants to make. Yes. I'm not saying that you shouldn't try and hone your craft and, and learn different things, but at least I struggle a lot with being like, well, I really like this style, but I also really like this one and it's I don't hard. know which one. And it's like, my hand will make what it wants to make. Sure. And then that will be my style and that's great. That's easy, you know? Yes. People might strive after your style. It's like, no, just be you. What about when you, let's flip the tables. <laughs> Interview me. Um, what about like, in, in chat as well, I'm curious of like, um, when you see, like for me, if I see like, um, like a Leica video, like, mm -hmm. or a movie, um, you know, stop motion films, or even just like really great painterly things, or mm -hmm. things that are pretty out of my realm right. or my scope, and I see those things and I'm like, well, I have to figure out how to make stop motion now, mm -hmm. or I need to know how to render better, or, and I think over the last year, I've gotten a little bit better at just realizing like, that's not what you do, mm -hmm. do what, and, and be curious and explore. Right. But is that, and I just answered the question, I just took that completely. No, but I agree. But how do you feel about that? Yeah. Isn't it hard to like, see all these people and, mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, and I think that that's actually the best place for you to find reference and get inspiration so you're not just like constantly looking at work that looks like your yes. own and being like, I'm inspired by that. It's yeah. like, look at stuff that doesn't look like what you can make. And bring it back mm -hmm. into yours. Right, yeah. and that's how you can make something really innovative. That's how you can step further away from possibly stealing someone Everyone else's else. things, doing something that will make you valuable. I think it's good to be inspired and kind of get that fire under your butt for those things that you're not strong. Yeah, I think and, that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Jimmy is wondering, did you see Kubo in the two strings? I did. What did and you then, think about it? Well, I went home and I was like, well, I gotta figure out how to make Kubo in two strings <laughs> yeah. now, so i uh, got a lot of work to do. Um, I thought it was wonderful. <laughs> it um, is wonderful. It, it's hard not to love a like a film. True. They're just like, it's just there's too much effort in like, beautiful craft yes. in those movies to be like, meh, it was all right. Because like, at no, the no, very no. least, right, you know what went into it. Right, or if awesome. you don't know what went into it, you should watch a behind the scenes oh video. <laughs> because... It'll make you want to throw up. <laughs> you will die They're and go to heaven. so good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Hannah says, hello, I have a question. Yes. Yes, Hannah. Go. Picking on you. All caps. Scream <laughs> it. Do you have anything about, uh, do you know anything about cards or how to properly design them? The greeting um, cards? Greeting cards or uh, business cards? Um, Let us know. I do, I guess I can piggyback off that question and know that I feel pretty confident being, uh, I guess I, I went like computer science for a little bit and mm -hmm. did some programming and stuff and wasn't good at it. And then <laughs> moved to like web design, graphic mm -hmm. design, and that kind of turned into like design and icon design. Right. And business cards and brand identities. Right. And that brought me to illustration and now like animation and children's books and stuff like that. Right, but, that's a nice um, progression. So I think like inherently, 
I know a bit about design. Mm -hmm. And that's really powerful because there's a lot of illustrators out there that are incredible illustrators, but then when they need to make their website, it's like, it just, it doesn't shine. Yeah. Or if, you know, some illustrators may give you a business card and it's like, well, this business card is junk. Yeah. So I think learning like at least a little bit of everything, because mm -hmm. what, 20% of the knowledge of design can probably take care of 80% of the need. Like you need right. to know how to set type and you need to know how to, uh, you need to know about typographical hierarchy mm -hmm. and even shape language and directional language and mm -hmm. making, so the basics are always good to learn. So I know how to design for the most part, I think whatever that card would be, I'd probably be able to figure it out. Plus right. there's so much reference on the internet and yeah. stuff. But True. just knowing the fundamentals gets you wherever you need to go. I think. Yes, I, I saw that a lot in school, being an illustration major and then, like you said, making websites or business cards and the type would look terrible or the, yeah. just the illustrator work that people would have to do and it's like, you really do. Need to either know how to do it or be willing to collaborate with someone or pay someone else yeah. to help you out. Yeah, there's only a certain extent, like I won't animate for mm -hmm. most of myself because I'm not good at it. Right. So it's, you know, or I need to really learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, Marcus Williamson says, Kirk. Oh, Marcus, cool. <laughs> What's up, Marcus? <laughs> it's so nice seeing people that I recognize or I'm friends with. Yay. I really appreciate them coming in. Welcome to the stream, everyone. If you are just checking in, we have about 10 minutes left to get your challenge submissions in. Today's challenge is Superhero. So we have a template for you that is an Illustrator template. You can download it in the Challenge tab at be.net slash live. Make sure you're watching over on Behance. If you're on YouTube, come on over so you can chat with us and participate in all those good things. We already did our giveaway for this stream, but there will be a giveaway in the next stream with Ren and Lydia, two dear friends and two awesome designers. <laughs> they are in the studio and they're marvelous. <laughs> it's a fact, believe it. Um, Charlotte is wondering, he's not using the pin tool, it's something different, the pin tool looks different. Yeah, Accurate. yes and yes, yes and no. Um, <laughs> Everything I'm doing can be done with the pen tool. It's like a glorified pen tool, but um, don't let that take away from the pen tool. Um, she's right, <laughs> but but it is like it's kind of like the pen tool for sure. It's yeah. just there's a couple extra little quirks to it, but for the most part, everything I'm doing you can do in the pen tool. Um, gotcha. I think rather than doing a bunch of red outline stuff, I want to switch to maybe a little bit of color. Cool. Um, so I'm gonna bring in like four color blocks here. I'm gonna. I was wondering pull. what those were. Yeah, so <laughs> Scully is pretty well defined in his colors and his design, mm -hmm. so I probably would just pull gotcha. some stuff from, so I also thought it'd be a decent time to show some of the thesis work that I've been working yes, on. Yes, please do. Um, there's like 51 images here. Um, yeah, so this is, oh, nice. let me get through one that's like kinda cool, but like, these are some of the pieces Ooh. that I'm working on for the short film that Latham and I, and others, uh, Adam has been like, Adam Danielson's in the chat. He's oh, been cool. like pivotal and like helping me write and rewrite and like tell me what's good and bad. And mm -hmm. I, my friends are all helping me so much. And Thanks, I can't friends. Them enough. Yeah. Um, but these are some of like the, the keyframes. Mm -hmm. So these are my kind of colors. These are the kind of colors the I pick. Muted. I heard on Just a stream like, the other day that you called them like poopy colors. <laughs> <laughs> Chantal said that. I did not yeah, say right, that. I <laughs> but I agreed with her. So yeah. So there's, I may as well kind of flip through a couple of them. Yes. So how much of this work is already done? Like <sighs> animated style? Or yeah. like these are like all these shots are done mm -hmm. um, and layered properly and mm -hmm. ready for Latham to get going on. Yeah. <laughs> um, Chip <-tap> <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, most of these are done. Um, there's a lot more to do, but they're getting there. So these are like the rooms that he's getting lost in and they're like outside but mm -hmm. inside rooms. Mm -hmm. It's like this weird like the danger room from X-Men or like yeah. these like weird like those, like, what is that? Um, I always forget the name of the Jim Carrey movie where he's like inside a simulation, not a simulation, but like Truman a, Show. Truman Show. Mm -hmm. And like when he gets to the end and it's like a yes. cardboard, and I'm like, that's just so cool. So I'm like, well, these clouds are painted on the wall, maybe, but they look like they're not. So I'm like, oh. he's stuck in this like weird, like, ecosphere room. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, he's going through a space room. He's going, that's when he gets like this shock thing. He's in <laughs> the snow room. Wow. Um, so yeah, so there's a bunch of different things. So flipping through them a little bit, I mainly am just here to pull in one of the images and take the colors for yeah. him. Mm -hmm. Just because he's kind of always wearing the same colors and there's no need to reinvent it. Um, but yeah, that's this is the preview into a bunch of- Sneak peek. Different images of it. Um, but this one is pretty good. Cool. Uh, actually, maybe I'll just 
I have the vector of this, so maybe oh, I'll open that up. That way we can show the power of like reusability and mm -hmm. stuff, especially when you're working on something with a character that always needs to be the same and stuff. Right. Um, so that one I think is called something with a parachute. I'm trying to keep this <laughs> so quick. It's like parachute fall or something. Look how organized everyone. There's tag colors, <laughs> everything. Wowzers. Um, so I'm going to guess that you built all of this stuff in Illustrator and textured in Photoshop. Yep. Yeah, everything is uh, actually, you can probably see like there's the Illustrator file and there's the Photoshop file. Nice. Um, this one's not the best example because the character is not getting textured much because it's mm -hmm. easier to animate if he's untextured. But yeah, like uh, let's find, this jungle one is pretty cool. I wanna show. This one was kind of tough. Uh, <laughs> let's find the fall. Whoa! Yeah, it's like a super wide. Right, um, so it can like s scan. Yeah, so he's gonna run across. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, the character's temporary, but yeah, it's a super long jungle shot. Mm -hmm. um, let's see if I can open it and like get a full size, which is command zero. Yeah, here we go. Wow! See you later, Moonir. See you in two hours. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Yeah, so it's uh, this long shot that he kind of runs through, and these like black sort of breaks so that it can get mm -hmm. closer. And now it's kind of waist up. Ooh, I can imagine there'll be some like parallax effects yeah, of totally. the foreground. That's awesome. Yeah. He'll run by this, a little wave, and be kicking up dirt as he goes, and then close up on his feet. So he's like running away from something. Yeah. So it's kind of Even those shadows are nice. Stuff. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, my, to your point, they start in like, I don't know, let's just open up an illustrator file. It's not gonna all be great, but I can get most of it. Whoa! Yeah, it's a disaster, <laughs> right? It's like, all that's how it starts, like all mm -hmm. shapes and stuff like that, and like making brushes with for the foliage, like repeating stuff. Yeah. And I think maybe it's a little more. Yeah, it's a little more. These files, though. And, uh, and you do have layers because they will be used in production. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they're layered decently. Um, but yeah, so like. There he is. Ryan is saying so these long shots would go into After Effects. Yes. Yep, totally. Just kind of scan across. Yeah. Um, so here's the fellow. Uh, this is like an older design of him, but nevertheless, colors are the same. Mm -hmm. So let's just pull a couple of the colors. Actually, this is an updated version of him. So. Uh, Anna, yes, we have your submission. And the challenge is over in three minutes, everyone, go, so make go, sure go, go, you're go. getting those submitted if you want them shown during the stream. We'd love to see them. See them. Yes. So he's got his rosy cheeks. He's got a yellow shirt. He's got a darker yellow to his shirt. He's got these kind of blue pants. He's got this bone color head. He's got a shadow of the bone. Give this an outline so I can actually see it. <laughs> yeah, it's important. So how did you come up with the color scheme for him? Since he is a skeleton, you'd assume he'd be a little bit mm -hmm. darker. Yeah. Um, the nice thing is, is it can be whatever. Um, yeah. And he's definitely inspired by a lot of like old like uh, by works and like uh, Max Fleischer, who's like invented like. Betty Boop and mm -hmm. like all these great characters yeah. from like the 30s, 40s, 50s, and I'm sure I'm saying a lot of this stuff wrong, but a lot of it's taken from like Mickey Mouse and stuff like that and mm -hmm. Bugs Bunny. So I wanted him to be bright and cheery. Um, I wanted him to also be sort of a blank canvas so that he can wear, you know, a sort of more traditional, like, uh, yeah. uh, you know, meditation garb or Zen, mm -hmm. um, Tibetan monk ish garb uh, or he can wear a spacesuit, or he can wear anything. Yeah. Um, so I wanted him to be pretty simple, but very expressive in his eyes, and very iconic in his sort of chin. Mm -hmm. Same thing with like Mickey Mouse is like, oh, even if he's sideways, he's always always got double ears mm -hmm. type thing. Yeah. If he's you know if he's looking at you, this is exactly how he looks. I was gonna say, are you about <laughs> to whip out some Mickey Mouse am right I, now? Am I Walt Disney? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if he's looking at you, you know, it's like that. And even if he's looking to the side, his ears are still that way. Yeah. So I kind of bit on that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, if anybody cool. wants a print of this. <laughs> <laughs> um, Done. <laughs> Ship it. <laughs> uh, so he's kind of got like some of the, I, you know, took a lot from that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. 
But again, like even like the bone structure, it's like, I don't know, you're whatever this is, like there's a split in the bone. Right. But I would like, I don't know, it doesn't matter. They're bones, so it's kind of anything. So it's like I look at an anatomy of a skeleton and then I just break it. Or, right. you know, you use shorthand. Influence spot. Yeah, shorthand yeah. is a great way so. of describing it. Carmen, hello from Columbus, Ohio. What's hello. up, Carmen? Oh, I'll be in Ohio in a couple weeks. Yay! The homeland. <laughs> and speaking of nothing, uh, the giveaway <laughs> deadline has passed. I was looking for a segue and it just was not there. <laughs> so we will be looking at some submissions in just a minute when I get them open. And from there, I'll curate down the list. And then when it gets closer to the end of the stream, we will have Kirk pick a winner. The winner will win a free year of Creative Cloud. If you've won previously with us, we'll set you up with another awesome gift. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. I am just putting a dark layer underneath so that I can see, because I know it's going to be black yeah. anyway, so I know that I can base it off of some dark-ish colors. Yeah, and do you have? A new layer a hard time with him since he is such a light value. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like a lot of backgrounds you would ever put him in are probably light yes. backgrounds. Um, part of the challenge of this thesis, I remember two years ago when I was defining it, was I want I draw a lot of characters, put them on a white background, and mm -hmm. then put them on Instagram or whatever. And that's fun, but I want to get better at engulfing these characters with danger and friends mm -hmm. and what's their life like, what do they do, what do they live in, and trying to put them into an actual background or a forest or whatever. So Scully kind of came as a byproduct of that. Yeah. So it's tricky when I'm trying to put them on a white background, but for the most part, I also will use, um, let me quickly try to find, or I can just go to my site, maybe it'll be quicker if that's fine. Sure. Um, also, who knew that dot house was a uh, PDL? Or Did TDL not know. Or That's so cool that you can just literally type your studio name on your had, website. It's incredible. <laughs> um, like Scully, this is a Facebook um, sticker pack that I did, but like sometimes I'll highlight him with an outline, oh, without nice. going so far as to being like outline cartoon style, mm -hmm. um, or maybe just like a half outline. Yeah. Like here, you know, he's broken by the shape, but he's got. Corner of a blue cold here or that's here. That's really cool. Yeah. So I'll use like that's the sunshine rim light mm -hmm. or the shadow. So sometimes I have to do that because these are on a back white background, but they're working. So, but it can be a challenge, and it's a challenge that is worth um, figuring out. I think it's a good challenge. Yeah, those are awesome stickers, by the way. Well, you can download them on Facebook. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I will. <laughs> Fine. All right, chat, how would we feel about looking at some submissions? Do we think? I think it's a good idea. All right, I have them all open. I have them open until the 12.30 deadline. I noticed a couple came in after that, so they will be shown in the next stream. Do not fret, but these are the submissions for today. We're starting, I believe, with Nancy Kuda's submission. We can hop over to my screen real quick. Perfect. So this is Nancy's superhero. Heroes in Space. Oh, wow. oh, we have a new studio manager. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Super Sam. So we'll hop back to this. I really love the color yeah, scheme of this. flower blocking. This is cool. Yeah. It's this weird, like, um, kind of Adventure Time world. Mm -hmm. kind of, it's weird. It's cool. Yeah. And you know, I, I was going to say that this poster that you're working on reminds me of, like, an Adventure Time title card. That's what I, I should have said that earlier. There t this is like a title card in a poster format. Okay. And I'm like trying to define, I'm like, it's like a poster. And I'm like realizing, like, no, it's just a title card flipped up. Yeah. But yeah, no, that's exactly, and definitely looked at a lot of Adventure Time. There you go. All right, we've got Stephanie Harrington with Flamingo. Oh, here we go, Captain Flamingo. He's so <laughs> flat. Yes, and I love the vignette nature of mm. this little water. Yeah, it's fun. Really cool. Nice composition. Ooh, Ooh. Portal Woman. Oh, cool colors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nice texture. And a little logo for her. Yeah. She's got her own little identity. Hey right there. Sure, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Nice job. We've got Adobe Incredible. <laughs> AI. Love that. Oh, cool. Nice. That's smart. Clever. Incredibles 2 coming out soon. Oof. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> We've got Juan Camilo. Looks like the Terminator, perhaps. Ooh. Whoa. Nice. Super neat. Is that the Terminator? Is that? Yeah, no, you're right. Okay. Aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure you are. The blind leading the blind. I don't know. <laughs> All I know is RoboCop. <laughs> He's my bias. All right, we've got Joanna. Let's see. Madam Mime saves the day. That's so cool. Oh, neat. 
Indeed. She can create invisible like objects. Invisible woman, kind of. Mm -hmm. like nice job. Really interesting idea. This is great, man. It's like. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I know. I like the texture. Nice he was job, concerned. Tariq. Yes, he does. I would be concerned it's too. A nice painter. It's fun, nice and loose. It's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Nice job, Tariq. You even integrated the painterly style into the lettering. Perfect. Nice job. This is Richa. This is Art Girl bringing color to your life. Ooh. Super cool. She got cool hair, too. Mm-hmm, I was going to say. Looks like villain hair, but yeah. not a villain. Nice job. This is by Simon, Cyclops superhero. Okay, so you just did Cyclops Ooh. in this little cute style. Oh, well, you just won my heart. <laughs> you win. <laughs> just kidding. Let's give everyone a chance. Yeah, stop that. <laughs> this is Super Mama. Yes, uh -oh. all moms are superheroes. Tired. Mama number one. She has super sleepiness. <laughs> That's her superpower. Nice job. This is by Anna, Princess Leia superhero. Oh, cool. so quaint. I know. The sword behind never would have thought of that. Mm -hmm. It's so like, cute and cool, but in charge. Yeah, also, Super I've got nice. the power. Yeah. This is by Patrice, Wonder Woman, and it's animated. Oh, gosh. Yes. Oh, that's super cool. Mm -hmm. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? That's great. Good job. Nice job, Patrice. I really like that you went the extra mile, not only designing two characters or using the template, but animating it and coming up with a cool little transition. Yeah, really neat. Woman, Wonder Woman. <laughs> nice job. We've got Ice Cream Girl, and this is Pin Pal. Super cute. Oh, wow. Yeah, I love her costume. Dang, Pin Pal is so hyped. Mm hmm Just jumping. Like, pumped. That's great. It's like nice Mega job. Man. Yeah, it really is. It's by Andre, Super Illo on oh, the way. Nice. Wow, Very great cool. halftones. Oh, it says his name. <laughs> nice job, cool little halftone pattern. This is on guard. Fight me. <laughs> He's oh, super like, fighter man. He wants to fight more than anything in the entire world. <laughs> I love how his eyes are like a little bit unfocused. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, he's lost in his yes. thirst for blood. Mm -hmm. He's a little unstable. <laughs> love it. <laughs> nice job. But it looks like this is maybe a candy queen, oh, candy cute. girl. Reminds me of Wreck-It Ralph a little bit. Oh yeah, totally. Very cute and cute little vignette shape behind her. Yeah, kind always of good. Sets her in a context of some sort. And you get to control your background. Mm -hmm. Sometimes white isn't always the key. Yep, right. This is by Ian. There's a lot of nice little shines Ooh. and shadows on here. No, I love that line detail in the body and the arms. Mm -hmm. Those lines are so great. Yeah, it looks like Illustrator Girl maybe. Illustrator woman. She got a nice lip color too. <laughs> like it. So those are all the submissions for this stream. If you didn't see yours, don't worry. We'll show it on the next stream. I'll get this list curated down a little bit and then we will challenge Kirk to also give some feedback. Uh, maybe he'll be able to share something that's really strong about it, something that you could work on, continue to work on. But we'll do that in a couple minutes. Back to you, Kirk. Great job, Madam studio manager. <laughs> 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 Nabot says Wonder Woman was so cool. I agree. Hmm. A little surprise animation. Uh, so sometimes I might be flipping between outline mode uh, for when I want to grab points, mm -hmm. but don't want to hit the shape. Like if I want to click and drag these points, but I don't want to hit that head yeah. or lock it down or mm -hmm. whatever. So that's what I'm doing. That's command Y, which may or may not be the default shortcut, but it it's is. called outline. Yeah, cool. So it's super helpful sometimes. Yeah, earlier when we were talking about our favorite shortcuts, that one is one of mine. Yeah, it's really handy because so it allows handy. you to not have to lock things down ever. Mm -hmm. And I always get impressed with myself. I'm like, look at all these shapes I built. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can just like just zoom out and you're like, wow, I made <laughs> wow. a lot of shapes. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer says, I love AI girl, awesome art. Yes, yes. she was cool too. I'm actually looking at her right now. Uh, Safira says, hi, Kirk. I would really love to know how you add texture to your illustrations, because it is a big part of your illustrations. It totally is. Um, my short answer is stick around. Um, <laughs> I'm going to try to texture this up a lot on uh, Thursday. Mm -hmm. Probably we'll be at that point. We'll do some dry brush stuff and some gritty edges and all that stuff, everything that you kind of see in my portfolio, probably. Um, but a lot of that's done in Photoshop. Uh, some stuff will be done in Illustrator, like a roughening of the edge, but 
I don't want to texture too much in Illustrator just because it slows it down a little bit because there's so much math being done by the program. Yes. I leave that for raster, but I always try to make sure that I save that for the end and I know that what's done in Illustrator is going to stay that way because once I start painting on top of it, it's not to say there's no going back, but it it's more it's kind of a point of commitment for sure. Yeah. So I do that in Illustrator, um, and we'll do that on Thursday at the latest, if not earlier. Cool. I think that's a good point about knowing when you switch between programs and why you're switching. Yeah. So like when you're moving over to Photoshop, you want to be totally done with the composition yes. and you're adding the finishing touches. Definitely. I really love how like the colors automatically add so much life I know. to this. Yeah, it really, that's what I mean. Like it looks like junk until it doesn't. And you have to just kind of trust in that process mm -hmm. of like, I think this is gonna come out all right, but it also, like, who knows? But you can always make it work in some capacity. Right. Um, but yeah, it's always sort of a leap into faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were talking earlier about how live streaming can be scary in that way, where you're showing your whole process, and a lot of the time, it's not finished, so it obviously doesn't look how it's gonna yeah. look. People can be like, why are you what live streaming? Yeah, what do you even do? <laughs> That's fine, I'm like, uh, also, do you wanna check out this big jungle I did? That's mm -hmm. kinda cool. Prove myself yeah. real quick. I'm not that bad. <laughs> uh, and this brings me to a question that I'm always curious about. And the chat members, have you ever live streamed before? Have you ever done it on Twitch or YouTube, Instagram? I'm interested to know who else has yeah. jumped into this wild and crazy. Who can do that? It's very stressful. But it, I will say, I feel very happy that I'm doing it because it's not nearly as bad as I expected. Mm -hmm. So maybe if you, you want to do it, you should try it because it turns out it's not that bad at all. Yeah, right. I was going to say, I think even if it's not your strong suit, it's something that you should try. Yeah, I agree. It also shows you like what you're maybe not strong in or what you're really strong in that you didn't know. Yeah. Like maybe you learn that you're a good educator or you're a good mm. communicator and you didn't know that about yourself because you never walked someone through the process. Yeah, I think a lot of going through the MFA program, I'm meeting, you know, being older now and being in school, you realize the mm -hmm. teachers are just people that you can just know or whatever. And right. speaking to them, you realize like most of teachers get into it, sort of stumbling into it, like, oh, I guessed taught at a class mm -hmm. or I did one, one, you know, or I did adjunct or whatever. But I think you realize like you learn a lot when you're teaching too. Mm -hmm. And so even with this, I think if you make a habit of it, you start learning as you teach. Right. It goes both ways. Totally agree. Uh, Andre says, yes, he streamed on Twitch. Frank has streamed, but for gaming. Lisa's also done Twitch. Lots of Twitch friends. Uh, Hannah does Pictaro or Picarto. Huh. Nice. I never tried it, but I would watch my friends do it. <laughs> uh, Madison has been doing iPad drawing on Twitch. Awesome, Madison. Oh, cool. What apps have you been using? I'm interested. Yeah, and how do you not throw up while you're doing it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so especially streaming by yourself can be yeah, a lot to juggle. Just like talking to nothing. It's always a little uncomfortable. Even like, just like, not even taking, so like today I took a picture of like my breakfast as I was showing my girlfriend that I like, I'm doing a good job. Mm -hmm. like, I'm like, look, I'm eating. And I'm like so self-conscious to even like take a picture of the food, mm -hmm. let alone like vloggers that are walking like, yo, what's up? Yes. Like, yo, oh, mm -hmm. So I feel like streaming to a little bit may feel a little bit like that to me where I'm like embarrassed, but it's completely silly and not worth getting right. embarrassed with. But it's a natural thing. You're like kind of throwing yourself out there yeah, to the is. dogs. Vulnerability is huge mm -hmm. and I'm, very important. Yeah, I think something that helped me when I was streaming by myself was just imagining that there was always like 100 people in there. Even if there weren't, I wouldn't even look at my viewer count. It's just like, I'm in a room with 100 people. That's it. Yep. So if there were way more, I wouldn't be scared. And if there were way less, I'm like, sad. Just, just faking it till I make it. <laughs> And you make it. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Simon says that he started streaming with Vero. You can stream on Vero. Uh, Have you jumped on the Vero train? Uh, I I like I tweeted some like sarcastic things this morning <laughs> about Vero. Uh, <laughs> so I, I just I don't think it's going to solve all the problems that everyone thinks it's going to solve about yeah. like as if like Vero is not going to do the same thing that Instagram. As soon as money comes in anything, people do what makes most sense mm -hmm. for the product. So right. get ready for ads and get ready for. And if you think it's cool, despite those, then stay on it. But I don't think you're going to get out of ads and right. stuff. So I have not, needless to say. Yeah, I'm on the same boat as you. Okay, cool. so you're in same company. More of just like a 
Uh, I don't think it's a lot different from another social media network. Like they still have things in their policies where they could own your images or do things sure. that you. So I know a lot of other social media platforms do that also, but I just don't see the shine. Yeah, I think it's seen as like a godsend. Like everyone's like, this is it. This is for mm -hmm. people, by the people. This is everything that we need. And and it's fine that they're going to do things that you may not agree with, but you have to be prepared for that. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes. there we have it. These are just opinions. You yes. can believe whatever you'd like. Yeah. I've never actually used it, so I could just be <laughs> talking about nothing. <laughs> uh, someone asked a question. Oh, Nabat wants to know, how long was your journey from learning some starters web dev mm. and some code yeah. to where you are now? Uh, 2011, I graduated from school with a computer science degree where I mean, I learned computer stuff since I was tiny. I was always playing around with, like Linux and mm -hmm. just stuff like that. Uh, so that was a long journey. And then I graduated and I realized I had a job for a year or so until I started, I think 2012, I started like, I installed Illustrator and really mm -hmm. started getting into it. Um, so that, and it all kind of crossed around, but I guess three or four years until I started feeling like I was getting clients that mm -hmm. were making me proud or yeah. doing work that I was proud of and stuff. There was a while where I was just sort of just screaming into nothingness and be like, look at my work. Mm -hmm. And But again, I had a pretty quick takeoff and I'm really fortunate for it, but it, it took some time, three or four years, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, so the transition. That's time. I do remember, um, I think I told like, we were telling my dad at the time where I was like, I finally found out what I want to do mm -hmm. with my life. And it's a huge relief because I'm like, yeah. okay, now you just do it. Just right. figure out a way to do it. Simultaneously, it was also like, I finally know what I want to do with my life. I got to figure out how to do it. Um, but it's really, it's a very liberating thing to find something that you enjoy that could potentially be a career. Yeah, something that you really do enjoy. It gives you life yeah. and also supports you. Yes, and it gives you life and also life. Mm -hmm. Literally and figuratively. <laughs> so we have about eight minutes left till the end of the stream. Went real fast. Um, so maybe we could go through this top 10 options for the challenge. You can give some feedback, you can pick a winner, and then we'll kind of wrap up for the day. Cool. Sound okay? Yeah, awesome. Alrighty, so we're gonna start with Super Sketcher. Okay. So we can just focus on what you like about it, maybe one thing, and then one thing that they could do to make it a little stronger. Okay. Um, I like that it's uh, bizarre. Mm -hmm. I like that Super Sketcher is totally not a character that I would have come up with, for sure. Yeah. I like that, <laughs> I like that he's, it looks like he's drawing out of the eraser. True. Which is weird. <laughs> um, I suppose that could also be a, a flaw in its own way, where mm -hmm. he's kind of holding it maybe a little, maybe he's got his arm out drawing like this, mm -hmm. or maybe he's flying by and dragging it behind him. Right. Um, but I do, I love the concept, and I think that you've executed it really well. And I, I like this weird quirks, but maybe at the same time, those quirks could be a downside. Gotcha. Yeah. So how would they mm -hmm. fix that? Um, certainly, I guess, rotate, like, he's maybe flipping the, his hands, the thumb is on the bottom, so it looks like he's drawing mm, downward mm -hmm. or something like right. this. Or, again, maybe just changing up the pose a little bit, because it's probably done in Illustrator, so you can kind of rotate things around and have yeah. him maybe, maybe both, maybe he's got his sketch pad out in front, yes. too, or something. Yeah, I would or, say... I suppose, sorry, sorry, I'm realizing now that he's not drawing that lightning bolt, but that lightning bolt is coming out of his pen. Oh, he's got the power. Yeah, so uh, take back everything I said. Yeah, so I just think that maybe the pose could be a little more dynamic. Sure. But a really cool and innovative idea. For sure. All right, so we're going to clip through All these. Right. We've got Child Warrior. Child Warrior is Strong. adorable. Strong. Something they could work on. Super fun concept. Mm -hmm. The shield as a, uh, or the paper shield is brilliant. Mm -hmm. uh, it's great. That left arm, it's definitely looking short. Uh, if you stand you up and look at your arm, yeah. it comes down to your thigh. So right. as much as uh, I disregard a lot of anatomy, I think it's important to know at least because that arm looks too short. So I think bring it down a bit and mm -hmm. you've got a super fun character. Maybe add some shadows or something out of the neck. and Yeah, use. right. Yeah, notice a little bit maybe of a shadow yeah. over here. So you Keep can that carry going. that other places. And I think that there's something to be said about having your own styles yes. for body anatomy and all kinds of things. But if this is the first thing someone notices, mm -hmm. it might be distracting. Nice job. All right, we've got Derelict Man. Awesome to throw it into a real life setting. Yes. Uh, it looks like maybe, I mean, probably not Photoshop, but maybe there's some Photoshop in there's some textural element, which mm -hmm. is really cool, mix and jive. Um, I dig that, and the, I mean, the, I, 
idea is awesome. Yeah, it's, it's cool funny. flip. It's like, you know, everything is so super ingrained mm -hmm. and this is the opposite. So right. super smart idea. Cool. We've got Mouse Boy. Mouse Boy's awesome. He is awesome. Mouse Boy, I just would like a little more detail, maybe. You know, I, mm. I understand the flatness mm -hmm. and I dig the flatness, but maybe I just feel like those ears maybe are tucked back a little bit, so maybe you could have some curved sort of shadows. Yeah in the ears or and under his neck you know i just mm -hmm. keep saying the shadow stuff but and there's a little bit of a tangent right below his pelvis yeah that yellow sticking out mm -hmm. that's just a little uncomfortable so just shift him down 10 pixels and that will break that tangent mm -hmm. tangents are something that are so easy to fall for but uh strong is the character's awesome mm -hmm. and super awesome color palette really yeah. really dig that agreed nice job get uh what was this captain flamingo <laughs> um colors are awesome mm -hmm. Uh, fun pose, nice smile. The mask is great. Feather. He's got a nice smile. <laughs> <laughs> that feather is like way tech. Yeah. That looks like the Photoshop icon from like yep. Photoshop CS2 totally or whatever. Elements. That reminds me of that like that purple and blue feather. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that you tied in other elements. It kind of creates like a brand for the character. That's yeah. way smart. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, again, dynamic poses are where it's at. You know, mm -hmm. try to draw a line of action. Maybe there's some arc in the back or something like that. True. Poses are always tough to do, but mm -hmm. maybe that would be my point of yeah. fixing. Yeah, and if this is an asset for an animation, maybe that dynamicism, dynamicism <laughs> isn't as important because this would be actually yeah. moving and that would create the action, but since totally. it's a still image, that could help. All right, we've got Portal Woman. <laughs> She cool. Wonderful colors, mm -hmm. high-fiving herself. I didn't even realize that the first time. Yeah. There's a lot to look at here, which mm -hmm. is really fun. It's always fun to look at something a second or third time and be like, totally. oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm -hmm. um, I love that she doesn't have a neck. I love that she has some branding with her. It's great. Um, I, think I can't the, think of anything. The grain might be a little heavy, Sure. in my opinion. Yeah, and maybe tone that down, mm -hmm. especially in the background, I think. Yes. If yeah, on her, it looks thing. good, but this, it's like kind of makes things all the same value. Yeah, it dulls that nice confusing. pink and purple. Mm -hmm. cool. Nice. It's by Joanna. Awesome idea. Mm -hmm. Great concept. I like that the, tie, the sidewalk is a little wonky. Mm -hmm. It's kind of got a wonky perspective. Um, super cool. Uh, maybe killing back those uh, the purples on the lights. They're yep. they're taking away a little bit too much attention. I want to right. see her first and then mm -hmm. him. I don't need that's almost in the way between them dividing them. So maybe yeah. tone that back a little bit. Great point. We've got Super Mama. Mm -hmm. and then two more. I love that she's tired. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's great. I love the mug. It's just off tilt a little mm -hmm. bit. That's cool. Um, the baby pacifier or the baby mouth. Yeah. Crying. A little confusing. I don't know if it's a pacifier. I don't know if it's a mouth. Maybe mm -hmm. just like a a black smiley mouth and yeah. then that in front of it would make it a pacifier mm -hmm. or maybe just not so much gradient going on in it mm -hmm. um, would certainly help that. Cool. Nice job. Good character. Got the crowd favorite, Patrice, Wonder Woman. Animation. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Strong. Um, it's, I mean, yeah, the animation's killing it. The concept is great. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking mainly at Wonder Woman. She's got some super cool stuff going on. I just think maybe it's a little bit too like red, white, and blue, which is the point, but maybe they can be like the colors, the, the hues of those colors can kind of shift. Maybe I would like advise like dropping like a big red over the mm -hmm, whole thing and then mm -hmm. setting that to like hue or color and dyeing it down to like 10% just yeah. to kind of harmonize those colors because totally they're a little agree. bit, like that white is white mm -hmm. and that red is red. So maybe find a more interesting color palette in it. That might be cool. Yeah, I agree. And when you compare it to just woman, the colors are totally different. They don't really yes. mix together. So yeah, harmony is important there. Then our last one, candy, T candy bug candy. girl. Yeah. Just candy. Mm -hmm. um, she's fun. She's got super cool headgear and she's got a cool wand. Mm -hmm. I dig most of that. I think maybe the shadow under the neck is a little bit muted. Mm -hmm. Maybe it could be more of like a brighter green or something more of an interesting. It kind of kills it down a little bit where everything else is so bright. Um, and I had one other thing that I oh, the arm. The arm gets a little bit lost. Maybe cool. just a little shadow under the arm or something. Awesome. So we have like 20 seconds. Let's pick a winner and okay. then we can say goodbye. Any favorites? I like 
Mouse Boy. Mouse Boy. Mouse Boy is great. They're all awesome. Mouse Boy wins. Awesome. The Fulgen Show. You yes. are the winner. Congratulations. Uh, if Super you cool. haven't won before, we will be sending you over a free year of Creative Cloud. So be on the lookout in your Behance messages. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for being kind to Kirk and enjoying his awesome uh, stream. Make sure you stick around next for Lydia and Ren. And Kirk will be back tomorrow to continue working. Yeah, we'll do on more. The poster. Lots more. Awesome. Stick around, everyone. Thank you. And be sure you're watching on Behance. Bye. See you later.